Commission meeting Wednesday, November 13, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic to which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Commissioner Cohen? Here. Commissioner DeVille? Here. Clerk Commissioner Jacob? Here. Vice Mayor Clark? Here. Mayor Muhammad? Here. Okay, just a couple of things before we get started. If we could all speak into the microphone or speak a little bit louder. Um, a couple of times I haven't been able to hear what we discussed, so if we could just kindly move the mics the closer to our mouth. Yes. And we also have a Mr. Stephen Reimer here, and also um, Chief Coker would like to speak um, when we get to the remarks for the general public. Just wanted to get that out. Can't hear you. Yeah. Mayor, I'd like to remove, ask you to remove three items, if you would, please. Okay. Um, yeah. It's the. Let's uh, make sure we get all. The uh, item one, uh, Roman numeral twelve, the sanitary sewage uh, agreement, because we need to read that resolution. Next one is thank you. Is the <clears throat> uh, one Roman numeral sixteen, the floodplain ordinance, so that because we have to read that uh, by title only, can't just be on the consent agenda. And, uh, those, are, those are the my uh, requested uh, removals, please. Mayor, I'd like to have another one removed for discussion. Which one is that? Uh, Number one, Roman numeral five. Okay, and I'd like to have something removed off to the consent too. I have two okay. off the uh, bills over 500. Okay, I have, uh, what is that, Chris? The, uh, should I just read it off? The catering service for the health care is one. And then the we'll just pull bills over 500. We'll bring them up okay. individually. Okay. Just, just um, bills over five hundred. Yes, that's the okay. Yeah, Any one, two, two items on bills yeah. over five hundred. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's fine. What else? Madam Mayor, may I ask something? Yes. Ray, you got anything? Nope. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. So then I will entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda items. Items number one, five, twelve. And 16. Okay, Am so. Am I correct? 1, 5, 12, and 16? So I'll make a motion that we adopt a consent agenda excluding 1.1, 1 1.5, 1. 1. Is that 12? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and 1.16. I will second that. Any discussion? No? Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacob? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? I just want to make clear that, okay, so we're taking the two that are being off the agenda. Okay. The four that are okay. 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 Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Um, Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Okay. So let me just get this up. So therefore, item number 12 was removed where we have Mr. Reimer here. We're going to go down the list. That way I won't have you. Okay. So number one, bills over 500. What items are you requesting? Because I heard you had two. Gina. Mine? Oh, okay. It would be uh, 420, I guess. Does that the number? That would be the video production television advertisement. Okay. That is uh, $1,400. Yes. 
Yeah. And then the other one was the catering for the health care, which was $1,500 for yes. discussion. Okay, go right ahead. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to know, Chris, I'm going to ask you for your legal opinion about the video production, television, advertisement. Is that um, legal? I don't know what the background on that is. Um, whether I'd like it, some background. It, okay. what, what process it went through to, to, uh, to, to, to be here, so you need to give me the background before I can give you an opinion. Okay, so every year we do various means of advertising. Last year we did Sun Sentinel. We usually also do Cox Media, Wave, radio station. Um, I'm assuming Joy went upstairs to go get the packets of what we normally do. Um, advertisement for the health fair normally runs about $2,500. We also take out ads in Sun Sentinel. So this year um, we priced out the various means of advertising mm -hmm. and we went with the cheapest one. They gave us 100 ads on television, on um, tropical television, which is a uh, 23.1 for that price, as well as they came out and did um, live video from the actual health fair. So they were the cheapest that we've normally spent in the recent years for the health fair. Okay. okay. Uh, Chris? I don't, I don't know what the budget for the board of the health fair was, whether what the what the items are included, uh, whether it's purchase orders that were issued, whether it followed the, the, the procedures that we have for a, a, a statement going through the, uh, through the procedures. So that's really something either finance or, or administrative has to answer because I don't know if it answers that. If it, followed, if, it followed, if it followed all the procedures, then they can be approved. But if, if, if can we find out or how does, does that oh. work? because we'll need legal to find out about that. I just want to be sure. I don't want to vote on some. Oh, Harry, can you answer this for us? That would actually be this. My response would be the same for the three issues that you that you brought up because I'm, you know, I don't have a uh, flow chart of, of how these items were brought to the commission. Well, I have two. What's the third? No, the second one. He said three. No, no, I said two. Yeah. Sorry, excuse me. Okay. okay, he said three, so that's why I was kind of confused as to what the third one was. Two. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, so to answer uh, by Harry Taubenfeld. Harry Taubenfeld, Budget and Finance. Um, so to answer, the, uh, I guess, the initial question, is there a budget for the health fair? The answer is yes. Uh, the budget for the health fair is $10,000. It's part of a greater, it's part of a greater number that is allocated for the community events. Um, that dollar amount, I believe, is $37,000 in that general area for the community events throughout the year, and the health fair is a, a portion thereof. Um, <coughs> As far as the individual line items as it pertains to the expenses for the health fair, um, I was not privy to, I did not see these uh, expenses until after they, they were added to the sheet that you see in front of you. Okay. So I'm not, I, I don't know if the proper guidelines were followed as it relates to That's why I dollar amounts over $1,500. My understanding is they I, weren't over $1,500. So, um, the, the catering was not he revised his bill and that was submitted today so that bill is up oh, you're jumping around or we're, we're still well no you he said 1500 the okay. television station was 1400 1400 is less than 1500 okay but i saw the video and i didn't know that was something that i don't remember us ever doing that we've always okay so let me that's where i'm i'm Okay. Totally confused then. I do. So, okay. in the past we've done scripts. I just want to make sure we're okay. doing everything legal. Okay. So, in the past we've done scripts. Dr. Levy has always written the scripts for me to go to to Miramar Television Station. Right. I've done the commercials there for Miramar Television Station. I've done the commercials at Waves Radio. I've done the commercials at um, Cox Media 105. And we've done ads at Sun Sentinel. Dr. Levy has always done that. Um, those those scripts we basically just read off the flyer. And with that video that you saw, that was actually me reading directly off of the flyer that was approved. Mm -hmm. um, and they did a actual commercial for it, <coughs> for a, a 
video commercial instead of a voice commercial, but the other medias we still utilized the same, which was the tel radio stations, which still had my voice doing them, which has always been the case for the past six years. Okay, let me ask you, mm -hmm. in the past, how much did it cost when you did the others? 2500 2500 Yes. Okay. So, I thought, I don't know, I, I might be wrong, on I might be wrong on this, but I just want to make sure. No um, because it was on the website, and I was a little, well, not a little, I was shocked. To see it. Because I didn't expect that, and I and I thought we had a vote on that. If we're putting something on the website, it had to be voted on. When I've gone in the past, I've gone to Waves Radio Station at six o'clock in the morning. And that's never. But I mean, if we're going to put something on there, the I thought Chris had said something a while back. I don't remember what meeting, but um, I remember something, Chris, that you said that you, that we couldn't take anything off the uh, the town website. That we have there had to be approval if we were putting taking something off and put or, and if we wanted to put something on. We don't have an official policy um, as to uh, sure. uh, <laughs> items being um, added or, or removed from the uh, from the. Uh, as I'm concerned, as far as I'm aware, if there it may be a good opportunity now to address that issue and, 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 and develop a policy so that there is a, a uniform uh, method for having items issue, uh, added to the, the website and, and removed as, ne as necessary. So, do we do a resolution for something like that? I think you need to go ahead and develop a policy to, you know, maybe it, it's, it's more of a workshop issue so that uh, people can come up with some ideas about what would be the best way to. Add content, remove content, and whatever whatever the objectives are. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know, haven't really realized it was an issue until today. Up, so mm -hmm. um, you know, if that's something that needs to be done in the future. Then, then it's, you, right. it, it's, an, it's not an item that really needs to be addressed this evening because it's not certainly nobody's prepared to do that at this time. I just feel uncomfortable with this one, but the other one, the catering. Uh, but what, may, I, may I ask that question before? Yeah. I, I would believe if Harry can't answer it and nobody can answer it, then the manager should be able to answer it and give us suggestions where to go from here with the attorney. I don't know what is what is the manager, Madam Manager, what does she say about the, all this? Is this correct? Was this done right? Was do you want us to your opinion? That's her bailiwick. We did not get the purchase orders on these items. Like uh, uh, the finance director said, they were bought to us after the fact. So what does that no, mean? You never got the purchase orders? No, I didn't. Um, I didn't know that. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Attorney Ryan, uh, Madam Manager, what does that mean? It literally means that we did not get the purchase order. So whether or not the purchasing procedures were followed, uh, we would have to say no because we did not get them until after the event. So what is what happens now, Chris? When did you get the purchase order? I'm sorry. Uh, I was told by uh, Miss Kristen that it was one there. Uh, I left on Friday. Mm -hmm and that it was one there that Mr. Doctor did not sign because it had not been seen by the finance director or the department head. And I said it would have to wait until I got back. Okay, Ryan, I turn this to you. What do you do? Well, you there, there is a certain procedure that each of the any expenditures are supposed to follow. Um, if you want to remove these from the bills over 500 for this evening, uh, if this one, and if you have questions about the other one, until all the paperwork can be provided and you can address it once you have the information. It's kind of difficult to make a decision when you don't have the full information in front of you. I don't feel comfortable with this one. Well, I don't think we have a choice. If the manager is telling us procurement right. was yes. not I, followed, what choice do we have? We have to do it right. And so, Duke, I'm going to say that a town attorney, his suggestion, you got to talk up and tell us what to do. 
I just said. So if it if it's wrong, how can you approve it if it was questionable? I just okay. uh, maybe so I was clear enough. I think it's pretty well right. cut and dry that we cannot. Approved. Well, you, you, the commission shouldn't no. because it's, it's there's wrong. a question. Right, it's a question. It's not saying anybody did anything right. wrong, but it's got to be straightened right. out. I'm just glad that I it was that I saw this. I just had a question about it. I didn't know any of this other stuff. All right. So should we so. ask why we have him up here? Can we go to the catering? We can cover the catering as well. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask Miss Brown. Did you give them the quotes for the catering? I know they've been sitting on. Can you, you come down? Up in, in the mic. Good evening. No, I did not. Okay. Can you please uh, get a copy of all the quotes that that we received for the catering companies? Because again, I went with the lowest price. We had quotes from seven thousand dollars down to fourteen hundred dollars for the catering services. Was that, no, no, it wasn't seven thousand. What's the one? Twenty four thousand. Yeah, twenty one or twenty four thousand. I'm sorry. Could you state your name for the record? Joy Brown. Okay. So we received four quotes for the catering as well, um, because in the recent, the past few years, my mom has been providing the catering for the event free of charge. Unfortunately, she had to go out of town, but she also said she's seventy six years old and she will not be cooking for this event anymore, and that we needed to budget for having someone to come in to prepare the food. <coughs> For the event, and so we called around. Joy got quotes ranging from fourteen hundred dollars to twenty one thousand wow. dollars, and we went with the lowest one, which was fourteen hundred dollars. But we had to provide the actual meat um, product, the merchandise, the food, and so that's what we ended up doing. Was we ended up paying fourteen hundred? Well, we haven't paid them yet, but for someone to come in to prepare the food because my mother was not available to prepare the meals. And so we have how many quotes? Four quotes, because I know that Mr. Daltrey suggested that we contact Johnson & Wales, so we contacted Johnson & Wales as well as several other companies. And so those quotes are upstairs. Could you please provide those quotes to both the, um, to, to everyone? Can you make copies so that everyone can get a copy of the quotes? Yes. And also, if you could, I know I asked Christian to pull the quotes from the previous health fairs regarding advertising. Um, <coughs> And I know those are upstairs as well. Christian pulled them last week. She didn't get a chance to. No, she pulled some of them. Just one thing, just a list okay. of what was paid. Okay, so can you also provide those as well because of the fact that um, since we, we have folks that were not here prior to the other events and those that did not know how we had been handling all of these events. In addition, you might want to also not pay the Wells Fargo credit card bill for the food since the food was $1,000 from Restaurant Depot, um, as well as the other items that were from the health fair, including the purchase of the bags and all of those other items since they all fall under the health fair and we could possibly have a special meeting to discuss each and every item that for everything that was purchased for the health fair um thing is how there were a lot of things that went into that into actually putting on the health fair but everything did stay below each item did stay below the fifteen hundred dollar threshold which is what our purchasing manual says um and so I assume that by purchasing under the $1,500 threshold that we were staying within compliance from purchasing it as well as getting the quotes from the various vendors for the services. But um, since that's a question, I guess we need to pull everything from the health fair and then go through that and have a special meeting to discuss each item. Okay. Now, may I? Sorry. Okay. And now this is all new to me. Now I want to ask you. My question was going to be, why did we do the catering? I didn't know anything about this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that was kind of new. That the caught my no, we paid for catering the first year. The very first year, we paid the firemen, and they gave us stale food. Remember? But what are you telling? What are you saying that you went out and bought? You had food you purchased catered that was cooked. I paid for someone to prepare the food because my mom normally prepares the food. Oh, if we okay. had a full catering service, it would have been twenty-one thousand dollars. Okay. So instead, I found someone that would cook the food because I don't cook. No, I 
Yeah, I mean, your mother, I am. My mother does, but I, I don't. Sh I know she did. <laughs> so I had no one to cook the food. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I found someone that would come in and prepare the food that we purchased, which is the same thing we did the first year with firefighters. Um, over the years, my mom has prepared the food, but we always purchased the food. I thought you said no, we, okay. No. So uh, that's, that's why I wanted to find yes. out, and that was going to be my question. Yes. But now I'm finding out that this was in. This is nothing new. <laughs> This has been going on for the past six years. We paid the firefighters the very first year. So we. Okay, can I say something? Go right ahead. Okay, okay, commissioners. The only problem that we have is we have to do it right, no matter what. No one is doing anything, I believe, intentionally. But for a commissioner, just by chance, to look down and say, "I'm questioning that." And now we're hearing that there wasn't proper paperwork. Let's get our act together. Well, the paperwork's I'm, upstairs. Well, well, just let me finish. I'm looking at I'm everything trying to, now. Well, you can, and you have well, a right. I'm a good, commissioner. I'm supposed to look no, at everything. No, I'm giving you. I have to watch our pennies. Whether you know it or not, I gave you credit. Uh, uh, well, thank you. You just happened to. Okay, you I looked thought at you were. It, you saw it. Okay. You raised it. Otherwise, okay. I would have voted. Just as I've done, right. you raised it, and it ended up back with the manager. Then the manager said that the PO or whatever the procurement, whatever we're talking about. Well, we know, the five of us, and you can't say that you just got here. We all know that you better do the procurement correctly. That's what we got dinged on the first time. And if, we're, if we can't continue practices that are wrong, and so I don't, I don't think anyone's intentionally doing anything wrong let's pull it all off whatever the attorney says we have to do and the manager get it right bring it back correct it and not do it the same way next time okay it has to be done right we have no choice and you know howard mayor you know it too at the oig that was the biggest thing was the procurement uh, right, that's the what they came after us mm -hmm. so we have to get this right and we cannot let this stuff you know, happen. We got, to we got to do it right or don't do it. And that's where we have a manager that is watching and an assistant manager that's watching a finance and budget who I really rely on to make sure if he doesn't say anything to me, then it's not, there's nothing wrong. And where is he at? Okay. <laughs> and well, okay. I'm we're going to move this along. No, so I, can we sorry, approve bills I, over 500 minus no, those, I wanna, those I items? No, I haven't finished. Oh, well, okay. I'm sorry. This is the time we're supposed to be talking. And I relied on him. He said nothing. Everybody's blaming. This sounds like what we went through before. He said, she said, get it right. And I'm saying that as a, someone talking for the commission to staff, get it right. <laughs> So I will entertain a motion to adopt the bills over 500 minus all all items related to the health fair. You have to, you have to state which ones those are. I'm not sure if everybody knows what's what's related to the what's related to the health fair. If you could just say minus you know company A, company B, company C. Well, I don't have the full list here because I noticed that I don't okay, see everything on Okay, you entertain the motion. Let me make the motion. That's the way it's supposed to do, right? Well, you we have to do what the attorney it. is asking us to do, Howard. Yeah, whatever the attorney says. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm pretty clear about it. But just if, pick the items that you want removed, make a motion to remove those from the from the bills over $500, and then prepare uh, approve the rest of the bills, and then move on to the next issue. Those those bills can be the documentation can be provided to the town commission uh, for the review, and then it can be voted on at the next meeting. No, all the bills aren't actually here on bills over 500. I mean, no, because I'd rather have a thorough review of all the yes, bills on for the health fair care. because of the fact that this is being called into question. So the Wells Fargo bills are not on the credit card are not there, plus some of these checks have already been issued. Um, bounce to Bounce has already been issued their check. Um, I believe that... The DJ has already been issued his check as well. Okay, there it is. Uh, no, that's not. The Wells Fargo is on here for the turkey giveaway, but not for the health fair. 
How do you want her to frame it, Mr. Attorney? Okay. You, can, you can only address the matters that are on in front of the board t this evening. So if you look at the bills over $500, determine which ones you want to have removed. Uh, have a motion to remove those from the bills over $500. If that passes, then they'll be removed, and then you can vote to approve the remaining uh, expenditures that are listed on the, on the, on the um, bills over $500. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve bills over 500 minus uh, the catering services as well as Tropical TV International. I'll second it. Okay, any discussion? Well, we had the discussion. I don't have nothing else to say that we need to get this right. Okay, does that cover everything, Madam Manager, that you need to, that you have a question about? Uh, you have to come I up. did not um, have a question. You asked me whether the procedures was followed, yeah. and my answer is no, they were not. Okay, so is there other bills that the procedure was not followed that you need to straighten out? Yeah, we need to get that. The other ones? I think we've already brought those up to the parties. But I can bring a report back of bills that have not been approved. I think you need to do that so we could straighten it out and then get it and then go forward. I'm not blaming the management or the staff or the commissioners. <laughs> It's just that we're going on different wavelengths here, it seems. Well, and we just have to have it right. And so it's a procedure that you all have, mm -hmm. the commission yeah. adopted, that a purchase order is issued on any purchase. And depending on the department head, that department head is to sign off on that bill first. Mm -hmm. Then it's to go by finance to make sure money is available. And the last final would be either by me or Mr. Daltrey to determine that money is there in that account. But okay. I will not sign it until the finance director has alerted to me the fact his signature and the department head lets let us know that it's okay to follow. Okay, then. So I've... that is the procedure that was adopted by you all mm -hmm. that we carry out. Because of the fact of our position, we're to be good stewards over the money, and we follow the proper procedures. So I think I think uh, prepare a report of where things are going wrong, so we could correct it and do it right. Shouldn't be up here doing this. This is a no-brainer. You can't do it against the policy, especially when we, when they told us what to. You know we. Attorney Ryan wrote the policy. Can you call the trouble we'd be in? Okay. Can you call the question, please? Okay, so you, we sorry. have a long meeting and everyone has to drive up to Orlando tonight. So I think this is still pretty important. So is that everything that you need to do your work? I, I'm taking out, I'm carrying out your job, and that's your procedure that you gave us, and we just want to ensure that it gets done. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. right. I think that we can all agree to that, right, Jeff? Ray? Call the order. Call the question. Yeah. Okay, call the question. Call the roll. Please. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacob? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. And Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. No. I make a motion that we review all purchases for the health fair and bring it to the commission so the commission can be fully abreast of all purchases in the past I've always pre presented a spreadsheet and moving forward on all events we will be providing a spreadsheet to the commission of all purchases as well so that that way there will be no questions in the future on any of the events that we are hosting that I am the lead commissioner on can I get a second second can I do that? All right. I'm only kidding. Go ahead. Second. There we go. Okay. Any discussion on this matter? Anything? Anything from the attorney or the manager? Call uh, the roll. Mayor Muhammad. Yes. Vice Mayor Clark. Yes. That's, that's Mayor that's Cohen. Enough yes. Us. Commissioner Deville. Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacob. Yes. Thank you. Item number five, authorizing 2019 commission workshop retreat not to exceed $2,000.
Um, let's bring it back up here. Hold on. I think we should cancel this for the fact uh, being that two of us have full-time positions and uh, chances are neither one of us are going to be able to attend. And I do believe you mentioned you might not be able to attend mayor last meeting. Yeah. Was it? I did say that. So I, I think we should just strike this. Um, right here, it's right Oh, Jean and I could go. <laughs> I'm just saying there, there's I, I three commissioners that won't be able to make it to a commission retreat. I was, I was being. Uh, At the same time, I kind of question the sunshine legalities of, of going with that as well. Who has the thing? I'm second. Okay. Any discussion? This is for the retreat. Well, Chris, you're the uh, you're you're the attorney. Is this a would this be a sunshine violation? It can be the the retreat can be conducted in a manner that it complies with the, the requirements for the sunshine meetings. I think Commissioner Jacobs has brought up other issues that uh, would make it difficult to have the, the the meeting in addition to his concerns about the sunshine issues. So it could be. Yes. Okay. So then I would have to say no. Okay. Roll call. Any other discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Jacob? Yes. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Number 12, authorizing ta temporary sanitation and sewage connection 3740 and 3744 West Hollandale Beach Boulevard. Yeah, this, the reason I asked you to take this off is because we need to go ahead and read the resolution. Um, and uh, okay, you got these. I'm sorry. We have these numeral numbers. Can you tell me where I'm at? Because I don't know my numerals. <laughs> yeah, we're down here. I can yeah, show you. Okay. One day. Can we do the regular numbers on these so I know? For ABC or something. I'd, I don't, you know. I'd appreciate one, two, three, four, and five, two. Okay. <laughs> um, as, you, as we talk, talked about before, the property owner uh, wants to connect to the, uh, the county uh, sanitary sewer system. Uh, right now, uh, there's not a connection for the town. He's agreed that uh, he would go ahead and connect, but if the town has a system that's available uh, in the future, that he would agree to uh, change the connection over to the town. And that's what this, um, this it's, it's stated in the agreements in your backup. This is a resolution approving that agreement. So it's a resolution of the town commission, the town of Pimmer Park, Florida, authorizing the town to make it enter into a temporary sanitary, temporary sanitary sewage connection agreement with Canal Street LLC, a Florida limited liability company, authorizing and directing the mayor and town officials to execute and deliver said agreement for and on behalf of the town, superseding conflicting resolutions and provide effective date, whereas Canal Street LLC, a Florida limited liability company, is the owner and free simple um, a real property located within the town of Pepper Park, here and after referred to as the property, and more particularly described as follows, lots 14 and 14A, less uh, west 19 feet, block 40, a resubdivision of a portion of Lake Forest, in Lake Forest section 4, according to the pilot thereof, is recorded in Pipe Book 43, page, page 45, the public records of Broward County, Florida, and the east 62 feet of lots 12, 12 and 12A, and west 38 feet of lots 13A and 13 and 13A, block 40, resubdivision of a portion of Lake for a subdivision section four, according to the plat thereof, is recorded in plat book 43, page 45, the public records of Broward County, Florida, and the east 37 feet of lots 13 and 13A, and the west 19 feet of lots 14 and 14A, block 40, a subdivision in the portion of the town, excuse me, of Lake Forest, section four, as recorded in plat book 43, page 45, of the public records of Broward County, Florida, and whereas Canal Street LLC has requested that the town allow it to connect to the residential units located on the property to the Broward County Sanitary <coughs> System, and whereas the town staff recommends that the town allow Canal Street LLC to connect to the Broward County Sanitary Sewage System, provide that Canal Street LLC enter into an agreement with the town to connect to the town sanitary sewage system when the town constructs a sanitary sewage system in the area of the property and can provide sanitary sewage service to the residential units located thereon. Now, therefore, therefore, be resolved by the Town Commission in Town of Park, Florida, Section 1, that the town is authorized and directed to enter into the temporary sanitary sewage connection agreement with Canal Street LLC, a Florida Limited Liability Company. Copy said agreement being on file with the Town clerk and by reference made a part of your up section two that the mayor and town officials are authorized and directed to execute and deliver said temporary sanitary sewage connection agreement for and on behalf of the town section three that upon receipt of a fully executed temporary sanitary sewage connection agreement for uh, the town is directed to record a certified copy of this resolution together with a temporary sanitary sewage connection agreement in the public records of Broward County, Florida section four that uh, all resolutions are parts of resolution conflict to with being the same member as superseded to any such as conflict and section five this resolution shall be enforced and take effect in the passing option. Motion to adopt. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Oh, wait, you want to? You want to come up? Okay, come on. Okay, your name for the record, please. Uh, 
My name is Stephen Reamer, and I am the manager of uh, LLR LLC. And the only reason we're before, I'm sorry, and Canal Street, yeah, uh, which is Canal Street is the partner here, and we we also own uh, the nursery here in town, Aspen Nursery. Uh, the only reason we're here before you is because the um, drain field. Uh, for the sewer it failed and we have no other alternative um, but to connect to the county and we went through engineering we got the county to approve it we got engineering to approve it we got public service director to approve it we've got the the plumbing inspector to approve it we hired a professional contractor to do this work assuming we get your approval and um, we're happy to connect to a city system if there ever is the day that it's there. But unfortunately, it's put a big burden on the people who live in Pembroke Park because it, the system backs up every time it rains. So we really need to do this expeditiously, and we really appreciate your support on this motion. I thank you very much for the time you've given me tonight. And thank you, Mr. Raymer. We, um, we're taking that into account, and we will be looking at addressing it in the near future on fixing the sewer lines there. We, we, have, we have received your executed copy of the temporary uh, sanitary sewage connection agreement, so we can how the, the town can execute it, and then you can get in touch with the building department about whatever. Uh, so does that mean we're okay to go ahead and fix it? Yes. Well, thank well, you so much. So the, the residents will really appreciate it. Thank you. Our you got to talk to you, you know you deal with Mr. Larson. You got to do your building permit is all. You just got to finish the building permit. I don't know if it's in or not. We have two building permits in for okay, that. Then they can be reviewed because we have the agreement. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your help. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. And don't forget Mr. Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Mayor Clark. Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Item number 16, authorizing floodplain ordinance updates, Public Service Director Larson, interim building official Nunez. Yeah, this, you can handle it. Uh, basically, this is the, uh, the to correct some uh, issues we're having with the floodplain ordinance that, uh, has an undue burden on uh, new mobile homes being installed, and so uh, we work with uh, FEMA and the and the county and everybody to get uh, approval to reduce these uh, the level of the floor down uh, to a reasonable amount. And uh, Chris has written a uh, an ordinance to uh, address those issues as we discussed at the workshop. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, Miguel Nunez, Building Official. In addition to what Mr. Larson just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we are adding also requesting on this change of ordinance change two items besides the mobile home uh, because of the burden that it creates to the mobile home owners, especially in a non-flood hazard area or low density flood hazard area. Also, we are requesting for an additional increase on the elevation for the commercial and residential structures. We're talking about brick and mortar, non-mobile home in non-flood hazard areas. That equalizes similar to what other communities within Broward County has. <laughs> and in a, because of that reason, we added a definition as a crown of the road because everything parts from that point. That allows the public services director to determine the crown of the road in any challenging condition. I'm here to answer any questions if you may have. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Mayor. Um, now, this is not going to affect the homes that are in place right now. This is just new homes that are being being brought in? No. Uh, no, no existing homes are going to be affected. Only new mobile new, homes, newer home or home homes. if any mobile home becomes substantially improved, over 50% in the exterior, or it becomes fit over 50% substantially damaged in according to FEMA guidelines. Okay. All right. Thank you. You are Madam Mayor. Yes. Uh, I met, as I said, at the workshop with Mayor and Director Larson, and they explained. 
explained it. And it made good sense. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we can read it by uh, title only tonight, and then um, we'll uh, ask the commission to, to set the date and time for the uh, public hearing on this. It's an ordinance of the town commission in the town of Prim Park, Florida, relating to Chapter 10, Flood Prevention and Protection, amending Section 10-75, Definitions and Scope, amending Section 10-80, Design and Construction of Buildings, Structures, and Facilities Exempt from Florida Building Code, amending Section 10-99, General elevation requirement, meeting section 10 100, elevation requirement for existing manufactured uh, home parks and subdivisions, providing for inclusion in the code of ordinances, providing for severability, superseding conflicting ordinances and resolutions, and providing an effective date. Motion to adopt. Second. Session? Nine. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Um, when do we want to start? Uh, oh, December. Be, yeah, December, December, December 11th. 11th. December 11th at 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Number two remarks from the general public. Uh, Captain Coker wanted to speak on that item. Good evening, Captain Stephanie Coker, Broward Sheriff's Office. Um, two things I just want to touch on. 29 years ago on this date, Deputy Patrick B. Han was responded to a theft complaint at Pembroke Park Convenience Store. As he sat in the store's parking lot writing his report, he was shot at point blank range in his vehicle. The Broward Sheriff's Office will never forget Deputy B. Han's ultimate sacrifice and will continue to honor his memory and offer prayers for his family on this day and always. So I just want to remind you, today's date was 29 years ago that he was killed. Um, also, too, and I think you, everybody knows that we were, deputies were responding, um, I'm sorry, let me back up, deputies were doing extra patrol. They were sitting at the traffic light, and someone came out and shot 17 times at them. They fled into Miami-Dade, and the deputy who was driving the vehicle was able to get a good view of the subject who came and shot at them. So he was able to do a sketch of the subject, and we have a Crime Stoppers Award out right now, $3,000, so I wanted to pass this around to you all so you can see um, we're asking the public for help to try to get the subject identified who was shooting at the deputies. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he looks young. It help to show it to the TV. To the television, maybe. Yes. It's right up there. Yeah. Right behind you. Behind you. Sometimes there's that one and that one. No, it's these two. It's these two. Sorry. These two. Okay. And thank you. I got your report on the accidents from down the street it's very small but I I enlarged it okay <laughs> and then just so the commissioners know we're gonna have our uh, day of recognizing the all the workers and the on December 11th December 11th at 10 a.m. that's December 11th recognizing for their plaque over there okay. in the circle. Oh Okay. Thank you. And, okay. and Joy will do a proclamation. And um, Miriam will help, and they'll get it all organized for us. Okay. And at that, I just want can I make a quick comment? Okay. Todd, make sure all your bills and all the paperwork is proper in that whole division or any other division you see okay yes sir we don't need that problem that's it okay we're gonna go on uh, do you have any comments no okay just checking <laughs> okay number three regular agenda number one discussion sign code analysis general overview gas station updates 
Micah Miller Planning Associates, project number 1102-2018. This is for the Moyle. Yes, this is, uh, good evening, Michael Miller, uh, town planner for the record. Uh, this is the item we've been talking about for a few months. Um, earlier this summer, we had some uh, folks remodel and rebrand some gas stations in town. Uh, part of that included some lighting around the canopy area, um, and the, uh, you decided to grant those variances. Um, you also suggested that maybe we needed to freshen up the ordinance and look at uh, what other communities are doing as far as uh, you know, making the, the place a little more attractive. We looked at uh, the cities around us. We took pictures. We went out at night and uh, realized that uh, while we, we allow the canopies for over the gas pumps to be painted, have signs on them, we don't regularly allow lighting on the, on the surface underneath. We do to light up the ground. So uh, we, we've drafted an ordinance that would allow, and it's very similar to Hollandale Beach's ordinance, that would allow some lighting uh, on the perimeter of the canopies. Uh, the idea is to not allow exposed, bulb, expo exposed bulbs to make it look like a carnival type of thing, but they would be recessed like everybody else does, either in a plastic, you know, light up blue or some color, or they'd have a channel where the light is in there and it <coughs> wa washes the surface of the canopy. So that, that's the intent of the ordinance. Uh, we talked about this last week at the workshop meeting, and um, I thought we were ready to move forward with the uh, first reading tonight. It's a, an ordinance of the Town Commission, the Town of Premier Park, Florida, relating to Chapter 1, uh, excuse me, 21, uh, Signs and Advertising, amending Section 21-19, Prohibited Signs, amending Section 20-20, 21-20, uh, permanent signs, providing for inclusion in the code ordinances, providing for severability, superseding conflicting ordinances and resolutions, and providing an effective date. Second. Roll call. Yes. Clerk, Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Mahal? Sure. They were asking uh, if you'd set that also at the same time. 11, 7 p.m. Thank you for public hearing, correct. Number two, um, commission and board meeting minutes. So we have the minutes from October 2017 through September 2018. Um. Commissioner, uh, uh, Mayor, excuse me, if I may, I just ask that uh, they be reviewed in, in, in the packets that they're listed as on, on your agenda. So maybe address the, the workshop meeting meetings minutes first. If there's, any, if there's no uh, changes, additions, deletions to those, then that by motion can approve those uh, workshop meetings. Just if the person making the motion would uh, just list the dates of the, of the workshop meetings and then follow the same procedure for the, for the remaining um, uh, groups of minutes that, that are being presented to the board today. So the first one would be the workshop meeting minutes. Does anyone? Take one, pass it on. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Did the workshops first? Yeah, the workshop ones first. Mm -hmm. okay. Does anyone have any questions regarding the workshop minutes other than myself? Uh, I do. Okay. May I? Okay. I, um, I have a problem with these minutes. Mm -hmm. First, I'd like to say that I repeatedly, for couple of years asked about the minutes. I want that on record. Okay, that's number one. Number two, I don't feel comfortable with these minutes only because they do not describe the things that I had to say. So I don't feel comfortable. And I know you're going doing one at a time. Another thing, I, there's uh, 
June, I believe. I'm going to, do you mind if I just jump for go, a minute? Go right okay. ahead. Um, can't, yeah. we, can't we go down and then dispose well, of them? No, then because as we I want to. Them? Okay, may I finish? Let yeah, let, okay. Okay. I was, I was directing it to you. Okay, we Madam are missing, Mayor, okay, first of all, I don't feel these minutes are complete only because there's June 27th and June 28th or June 29th, correction, it's 27 and 28 that are not here. And that was a meeting that I was bullied and I was attacked and those minutes are not there. So that is another reason why I am not going to vote on these minutes. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. We're, we're pulling up the workshop ones first. The workshop ones that are presented are um, October 4th, 2017, December 12th, 2017, January 8th, 2018, February 7th, 2018, March 7th, 2018, and September 5th, 2018. Um, I'm not sure who all has had a chance to go through them or not. I, I'm going to put on the record that I went through some of the minutes. I did not go through the regular meeting and the special meeting because I, as you can see, I started tapping them up as I was going through them. I'm not quite sure who Mayor T Tarrant is, but there were several references to Mayor Tarrant. Um, also, Vetus did not start in March 7, 2018, so he's actually listed as the interim town manager um, on the March 7, 2018, and then the March 7th and September 5th are more of an agenda than an actual uh, mem minutes. So um, those are just some of the comments that I had. I mean, I literally tapped it up. We do need to move forward because JLAC is giving us a deadline of December 16th to have our audit in their hands. Um, and so we do need to move forward with these minutes. I'm gonna go with the let's get them approved so that we can move forward so that the auditors can complete their work so that we are not in trouble with JLAC because this is our our set in stone deadline of December 16th um, that came out today um, in their report for tomorrow because JLAC will be meeting tomorrow from 1 to 3 in Tallahassee and we are on the agenda and so with that being said um, these these are supposed to be action minutes not summary minutes and i stated before i want summary minutes because i mean actual minutes where we have actual definitions and discussion because there were a lot of things that we did go over that we discussed um including some of the problems that we were having and things that were not done and so with the summary minutes the summary minutes don't necessarily say all of the stuff that we actually said and all of the things that actually occurred and so I do want those minutes to actually be done um, however moving forward we have to give them something I'm not sure how the March 7th and the September 5th are gonna fly because it's literally just the agenda and it just says discussion was held under each item so um, I would like to move forward in adopting the summary minutes just so that we have something to give the auditor so they can come action um sorry action minutes just so that we have something to give the auditors to get this audit done so that we are not going before jlac next month so um commissioners what are your I'm going along with Jeffrey Jacobs. He said, let's go ahead and move it forward. And I backed him on it and seconded it or whatever we did. And I said, we move forward. And if you come back and you have to make a correction here or there, you make a correction, but give them what they need so we're in compliance so we can get the audit done so we can. Chris. Well, the, which, the, the, ref, the meetings that you're referencing as action minutes, uh, and since there are there is no action taken at a workshop, this is basically what you're going to end up with. It's just a, a, a review of the items that came before the commission, who was present, what, what, what the issues were, uh, time of meeting commenced and time it ends. Because action minutes, generally, if you're having a meeting like this evening and, and you, it were to be um, uh, done in an action minute format, it would be something to the effect that you had the ordinance amending the, the sign code 
uh, presentation passed five to nothing public hearing set and then you go to the next one there, there's not going to be uh, any more additional information than, than you're getting in in those uh, so summary so was held is just that's it right and, that, and, that, and that's what it, for the so action for, for the but these are all workshops so they're, well, they're done it they were they were well I think I think the 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 format changed as, as some of these might have been done in, in a in a matter that were uh, more summary minutes and then the action minutes were uh, that format was was uh, suggested in order that this um, these minutes could be completed in, in, a, in a the most timely fashion possible and and as uh, we've mentioned before the the Commission does have the the opportunity to go back and and, and review these in, in, in the future and, and and if you if you have uh, other mini minutes that you want to amend this and, and, and add as a supplement or things of that nature you can do that but for the purposes of uh, meeting these deadlines that you just mentioned um, I think it's advisable to go ahead and approve the action minutes and then go forward and uh, get the, the audit uh, matters uh, taken care of and then uh, give your time a little more uh, time without the time constraint for you to review these and, and, and if you want to listen to tapes and make the changes and then present that at a later date that could be done okay so do we correct the mayor tenant from now and that Vitas was not there in March of 2018 because he wasn't even yeah, a thought? You, you, so you are, he yeah, and that, manager? You, you, yes, you, 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 before you approve the minutes, that's what I said. If there's any, any, any additions or deletions, you can do that and you can go through and make corrections. Um, the fact that it, it just is a summary doesn't mean, I mean, just action doesn't mean it, it's not being, uh, it could be amended this evening if you have specific. Um, Entries that you say are incorrect, you would say that I, I you know, ask that, you know, item 26 on September 7th be changed that uh, so and so's name is deleted or so and so's added or their title is changed or, or whatever the situation might be. Then the, then the if there's no objection to those changes, then, then the, the minutes can be approved as. Or amended, which even if you amend them this evening, you still have a second chance to do that in the future if, if you determine find more error. errors. Did you see anything else that was glaring, Madam Mayor? The whole. Well, I think you know if it's not illegal. And that would be up to Attorney Brian. Can we go ahead? Is it? Does this put us in compliance with what the auditor is looking for, Attorney Ryan? It's one of the uh, elements that are necessary for the completion of the audit. Uh, this will be part mm -hmm. of it, the you know the, the numerous um, factors that the auditor will consider <laughs> when they prepare the audit and, and go forward. This is one, but this is these are ne necessary for him to complete it. Correct. It's one of the factors. One of one of the one of the key uh, elements of the audit that he might, must have um, to review these minutes so that he can uh, follow and meet his you know state guidelines to issue an audit. Okay, does somebody, Madam Mayor, does somebody want to make a motion? I don't know how you want to design it to make the motion. The way you want to spell well, out. I would the, suggest that you that somebody would make the motion that the, the motion to approve the workshop minutes of, of the town commission for uh, meet, meetings held on you know. So November 4th, 2017, and just go through the dates. Well, if you do it, I'll do it. It's up to you. I don't, I don't have a problem. For the sake of moving forward. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion based on the town attorney's recommendation that we approve the workshop meetings, number one. Where's the Roman numeral? There's no Roman numeral. Okay, number one, 10-4-2017 at 3 p.m. Number two, 12-12-2017. 12, 12, Number three, one eight two thousand eighteen. Number four, two oh seven two thousand and eighteen. Number five, three seven two thousand and eighteen. Three oh seven p.m. And number six, nine oh five two thousand and eighteen. For a second. A second. Any discussion? No, roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. 
Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? No. Clerk Commissioner Jacob? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Number two, the regular. Okay. Madam Mayor, could uh -huh. you give those to um, the clerk assistant so that she could make those changes? Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Number two, the regular commission. Commission. Wait, 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 wait. If you're making changes, you have to, you have to read them. You have to read them into the record. You, the, the, those, if you want to. You think you see the document? Tell us, and we'll. we'll Okay, on February 7, 2018, Mayor Tennant, Tarrant, Tarrant. Can you talk in the mic so I can hear you? February 7, 2018, there's um, specific reference to a Mayor Tarrant in the, um, Are these prototypes? Yes. Okay. So, item number 43 on the February 7, 2018 minutes, reference Mayor Tarrant states that she believes the town. Well, I, I don't know who Mayor Tarrant is. Do you know who Mayor Tarrant is? I didn't know well, who Mayor Tarrant was. Well, I would have to put a, a, a similar, it would be Mayor Tyrant. I could take that title <laughs> if I, you know, need to. Oh, I, I don't know. Who I feel like that from is. time to time. Okay, you you know what? You work with the attorney to get the language what you want. You know what you want to do there, and we'll. we'll, we'll hmm. Can Mayor Tarrant run this meeting? I can go drive up to Orlando. I don't know. No, who you Mayor pass Tarrant the gavel and, and you can go. I don't know who Mayor Tarrant is. Okay, so. Okay, so you are you asking that those the references to Mayor Tarrant be changed to Mayor Mayor of Muhammad or whoever was speaking at that time? <laughs> That's fair. I, be, I believe it. It, it, um, it would only be the, well. There are some. I mean, there are some weird things in these minutes because there are references um, in Todd's report uh, where Larson became Lewis, and I'm not sure if they're talking about Jeffrey Lewis or Larson because they spelled it L E W I S. So I'm not sure if who was actually speaking, but who's going to sit there and go through the tape to see if it was Todd Larson speaking or Jeffrey Lewis speaking. Um, so that was um, another thing. Just like in the March minutes, it says interim town manager Vitas on March 7, 2018. Well, Vitas didn't start until August 3rd, 2018, and we didn't know who a Vitas was in March of 2018. Wow. So That's way off. So um, we didn't have an in term, if I'm not mistaken, in March of 2018, did we? I don't think we did. I don't remember having an interim at that time. At that time, we were still trying to get OO on board, so. Let's, let's, so. let's, let's address one thing at a time. Yeah. If you want to make that change of, on in, in, pending uh, business uh, 43, to change as both those references to, to Mayor Mohammed. Uh, I just looked at the, at the, at the um, <laughs> roll call, and it doesn't indicate anybody named uh, Mayor Tarrant, so it, it it would appear to me that's a, just a uh, typographical error. Was Mayor Muhammad here, or was it? Uh, yes, because because she's she's mentioned further in, in the same paragraph. So then, it most likely, it was you. Okay, so you need a motion to change. Just you no, know, just make the notes, and then we'll make all the we'll make a motion to, to accept all your changes at one time, if you would. Those are the only two changes that I would do for now. Okay. And what's the second one? Beat us being the interim manager in March 2018. <laughs> okay, so Attorney Ryan, how do you want to handle that one? Well, it, then, then strike the reference to, 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 to um, I have to catch up with you. What, what, what page, uh, what, what item is that on, on 17? Um, uh, 3 7. Right, I, but yeah, but which? They're even in the front, it, roll call. Can I say something, please? Mm -hmm. I think Vetus came in October, and he was here for six months. He came in July. July. But, yeah. Oh, but anyhow, okay. um, the anyhow, sure. but yeah, they, he can be he can be yeah. stricken from the from the, the from the, uh, the 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 roll call of the individuals present. The inter interim uh, town manager Vetus would be removed. Who did those minutes? I didn't know that. Copied and pasted. 
because we didn't even have a resume at that time for him. <laughs> so is that, those are the two changes for the, for the workshop minutes? For the time being, yes. <laughs> okay. Make sure the record says for the time being because so she can come back and if she has other ones that are this glaring, then we need to change it. Okay, so what do you want me to do, Attorney Ryan? There'll be a motion, motion to uh, uh, um, up the, to, I guess, we, actually we should have uh, not have passed it until you made those changes. So let's if you withdraw the, the original motion, um, that pass it and then, who made the motion? On, me. Uh, so Pardon? Yeah, feel, Pardon, you want to just wait and fix them later just to give them yeah, but to correct this for, for this one item, though. Oh, okay. So that if, if, if we'll uh, withdraw your motion on, 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 on that was. Okay, I withdraw my motion. I think. Ray. Motion, Ray. Motion, Ray. motion to reconsider the minutes and then it, it move to adopt them as change, as amended by uh, Mayor Muhammad. Okay, so I make a motion now. Did Ray rescind his second? Reconsider. Okay, reconsider. Let's, so I make a motion that we reconsider the workshop meetings uh, in addition with the mayor's two suggestions. Second. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? No. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Second one is the regular Regular, regular commission meeting minutes. So, um, as I stated before, I didn't get a chance to get through the regular and the special, so I don't know if anybody else has any comments on them. But I will say that um, that's the one where on the very first set of minutes is, I'm not sure if it's Lewis or Larson. I think it was taken a lot. Hmm? <laughs> what is the background? <laughs> Well, it was under Todd's public public status of town projects, but unless there were some code issues, I guess, and so that's I'm like, I don't know who they're referring to. Um, but we'll deal with it at a later time. Just let's just move forward in adopting it to give the auditors. I'll do the dates. Okay. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the regular commission meetings dated number 7, 10, 11, 2017, number 8, 11 8 2017 number 9 12 13 2017 can i drink a party oh it's my water okay number 10 oh, thanks i got i'm so thirsty you're making me do all this work <laughs> i'll make the motions you read them <laughs> okay number 10 1 10 2018 number 11 01 25 2018 number 12 02 14 2018 number 13 05 09 2018 number 14 09 12 2018 number 16 09 18 2019 and with the one exception or question about Lewis and Todd and then it says take garbage out when I get home. Oh, God, that's not it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay. okay. Is there a second? Second. Gotcha. Call the roll. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? No. Commissioner Javel? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. We're going to go to the special commission meeting minutes. Uh, again, I'm putting on the record, I did not get a chance to read that, so I do reserve the right to come back to it. Yeah, we all reserve that right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number, th number three, special commission meetings, 16, 10, 4, 2017, 5, 1 p.m., 17, 11, 01, 2017, 18, 11, 9, 2017, 19, 11, 29, 2017, 20, 12, 12, 2017, 21, 01, 08, 218, 22, 1, 17, 2018, 23, 2, 02, 12, 2018, 24, 
11 a.m. Wow, that was early. 12, 25, 02, 20, 2018, 7 p.m. Number 26, 03, Ray must have been on board then. 03, number 26, 03, 07, 2018, 249 p.m. Number 27, 3, 21, 2018. Number 28, 03, 28, 2017. Number 29, 04, 03, 2018. Number 30, 06, 06, 2018. Number 31, 07, 13, 2018. Number 32, 7, 16, 2018. Number 33, 7, 24, 2018. Number 34, 9, 06, 2018. Number 35, 09, 18, 2018. Number 36, 09, 25, 2018. That's a lot. Excuse me, 328 should be uh, 328 2018 rather than 17. Okay. Where are we at? Oh, so that's a correction on the writing. That wasn't my speaking. Right. Okay. So we're going to have to go back, Attorney Ryan, and correct something. Okay, somebody going to be. Okay, everybody's for sure on this one. They're making me make a change, Attorney Ryan. What's the date? Well, if you look at the uh, agenda itself, it says actually. the 18. Yeah. If you go to the agenda itself, it has the 18th on it. It's a typo by us. Okay. Okay. So that's, the, the correct date is, if you'll just. Uh, I'm going to go and make sure. She'll tell you the correct date and then just incorporate in your motion. Okay. <laughs> Verify and make sure so we don't have to come back on a technicality. should be 18. It's 18 on the cover sheet and on the minutes. Okay, so if I may amend all the statement, make amend the statement and where I said 28 03 28 2017 should and will be read 28 03 28 2018. March 28, 2018. That's correct. That's what's on the minutes. So is there a second, Madam Mayor? I second. Welcome. Vice Mayor Park? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Right. Commissioner Cohen? No. Or Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Muhammad. Yes. We are going to do the pension board meeting. Okay. Number four, pension board meetings. 37, 12, 12, 2017. 38, 4, 11, 2018. Number 39, 08, 01, 2018. Madam Mayor, is there any corrections to those? Um, and is there any correction on the dates? No, those were fine. Those were fine. I read the, the short packets. <laughs> so what is it you First, want? I need a second. Okay. Second. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVoe? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? No. Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Mahoney? Yes. Um, the next one is going to be bid opening, and that was only one for March 1st, 2018. Number five, bid opening meeting. Number 40, 
0301 2018. We have a second. Second. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVette? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? No. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Mahar? Yes. And the last one is the Pembroke Park Cares meeting. And um, actually throughout the meeting, the minutes, there were some spelling issues. When it came to my mom's name, they were, kept spelling her name wrong. So in that one, the, the spelling needs to be corrected as well. There were some in the other minutes, but I'll deal with that later. Yeah, you already, uh, I think she, she already corrected the spelling your mother's name. I saw some, not all of them. <laughs> yeah, I had her. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I saw where it was handwritten too. <laughs> So you go ahead and read as is? Mm -hmm. Okay, number six, Pembroke Park CARES meeting 41, 04, 05, 2018. Second. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVette? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? No. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Mahal? No. Okay, so now with these minutes being adopted, we still want our actual minutes done for us for our clarification and for our records and I know that's what Commissioner Cohen is saying I've been saying um, we've all been saying that as well so this I'm hoping will satisfy the auditor so that we can get our stuff done um, those is, is this complete is what I'm asking for the auditors Harry okay thank you and um, is it correct to form? That's is this what they wanted? Yep, have yeah. Harry, Harry come up. Yes, it's it, this is what they wanted. Okay, so it's been Harry didn't have to come up with, unless you want to talk to him. Andrew said it's correct to form. Okay, okay so um, we are good on that. Um, what I would like to see is our regular minutes being done at the same time so that we can have our regular minutes for the record since these were done just for the sake of pacifying the auditors and OIG and the OIG and the Florida State statute yes primarily the Florida State statute yeah, because we by <coughs> doing this we take out of jeopardy 1.2 million dollars that exactly. we would potentially be in jeopardy if we didn't do this. Well, you had our full support. Thank you. We appreciate it. And and good job because you brought four. If I may, Madam Mayor. Right. And thank you, uh, Madam Manager. Okay, and, and and your staff. They did a lot of work to get this up to us to meet the minimum requirement. Thank you for your hard work. You're welcome. Um, number I would definitely okay. like to thank um, <coughs> Susan. She um, was really put in almost an impossible situation, but she's almost there. Um, and in the future, I hope uh, you all would approve the policies and procedures that the attorney's bringing forward that minutes never get this far behind. I agree. For the record. Number three, discussion in Langham HR salary and compensation plan. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs and Yolanda. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce your last name, Yolanda. <laughs> That's going to be like me with the Guido guy. Menegasso. Did I say that right? That's Italian. <laughs> wow. It doesn't come to pepperoni. <laughs> yeah. Yolanda Menegasso, Human Resources. I had a much less complicated last name, and then I got married. So. <laughs> okay. Um, where do we start? Oh, does anyone have questions? So I do. May I, Mayor? Sure, what is your recommendations for uh, 
for the last discussion? Yeah. Okay. Natasha Joseph, yes. Oh, that's another item. Oh, that's not it? Okay. No, sorry. All right. Well, I guess we can start. Let's start. Can we start like this? I met, remember, I I brought up I had a question. Yes. And we were going to call the attorney that's working on the annexation. And Chris was in the loop with also, he heard about what we were doing. And so, Yolanda Madagascar? That's that's honey. That's where the honey is made. That sweet honey. Go ahead. Uh, so we met. We went over things. I think she has a better understanding after talking to Attorney Severson, you know, on the background. And so now I think that's a good jumping board where you yes, can. Yes, that's a very good introduction. Thank you. So I did meet with the vice mayor today and with David Severson, the lobbyist, over the telephone. And what we did was we went over the organizational chart specifically, and we have a very clear understanding that there's, there's three components, there's three main components to this compensation plan. You have what you're holding your employees accountable for, what their job duties are, what you're gonna compensate them for if they work in accordance to those expectations that you've set for them, and then how is the town administering the compensation plan in general, which is where the organizational chart comes into play? So what my understanding is that the vice mayor wants to do is highlight that there's a very unique form of government here, which is a commission form of government. And this is a major document that is going to serve as a foundation, hopefully for the future, for the town because even though it's a living, breathing document and it's something that's going to get updated on a regular basis, this is a very important document. So we want this to serve as a foundation and highlight that it's a commission form of government. So my recommendation would be that we add in two sections of where the compensation plan has an executive summary that has like a little bit of, a, of an overview of Town of Pembroke Park right, like how many residents you have. And we, specify, we specify there that it is a commission form of government in the executive summary. In the organizational chart, we have that very clear again, that it's a commission form of government. The dotted line reporting, I think, was pretty clear. But I also want to add language in the executive summary that we reference the specific resolution which um, the town attorney was able to provide me with today. Um, that there's a resolution mentioning that it's a town, it's a commission form of government, and that the commissioners serve as a liaison, right, which is the whole dotted line reporting that we were talking about. And I will include that resolution in the appendix of the compensation plan, because the appendix is really all of the data that I gathered in order to provide you with this report. So we are mentioning it in the executive summary, we're referencing a resolution. We're including that resolution, the full resolution document, in the appendix for future reference. And in the organizational chart, we're stating again that it's a commission form of government. So I, I believe that that would help to preserve that it's a commission form of government and that, and that this is in accordance with all the other major documents that the town has. Vice Mayor, did I say that? Yeah, and then, and then uh, you also added in there that uh, the day-to-day -day affairs. How did you do that language? Oh, right. That's important. Um, we had mentioned that the that because I have you know the dotted line reporting structure, but we had mentioned that the town manager serves as a day-to-day -day administrator of the town, executing the directives of the town commission. I don't know if you'd like to discuss that particular language. Well, what we what we're asking for, <coughs> uh, again, it was uh, Severson, Yolanda, and myself talking. Uh, David David felt like that we were going in the right direction. He complimented Yolanda, Yolanda, and what we're asking for, if you want to go ahead on the compensation side of your issue, you know, that's you might want to do that. But on the other side, the organizational chart, 
we want to make sure, and correct me if I'm wrong, Severson agreed with this, that it's compatible and consistent with all the other documents that we have out there, the major documents of the town, like the comp plan. And so that's where I mentioned to Yolanda today that if we bring this one portion of it next month up for a final resolution, then it'll give us plenty of time. That'll give us time to meet also with the town planner who drafted all that language with attorney Segerson. And uh, so that, that's what we basically came up with uh, today, you know. Give us a little more time. Why is our lobbyist involved in this and not our town attorney? Well, the lobbyist is... What does he have to do with making decisions for our town? He was repeating what was already there, what's already there mm -hmm. and where he's involved. He's involved with annexation. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea here, as I stated at the last meeting, is that you don't want us to say anything on one document and it says something else on another document, a major document. It should be consistent and compatible. And he's the one that developed all that with the town planner. And it came forward and we adopted it. And because it was a planning instrument, comp plan, it fell over to uh, Miller and Severson reviewed it with them and gave them some language and help with it. That's why that came up like that. So and, it's all revolving may... around annexation. What we did was he had nothing to do, the conversation that we had today had nothing to do with the actual salary data or the job descriptions or anything like that. It specifically had to do with the commission form of government being represented in this document. That's all. So the specific language that that I have as far as what the dotted line reporting is and that and 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 putting that it's a form of government a uh, commission form of government in the executive summary and again in the organizational chart we were just confirming that that language was consistent with other documents that he has been a part of and then we did contact the town attorney to inform him and give him a summary on what the conversation was and Basically, again, it's just simply to highlight within this document, more so towards the beginning of the document, not relevant to the, to the compensation data at all. In the beginning of this document, where the organizational chart is, to highlight that the town is a commission form of government. And I had promised you all that I wanted everyone to feel comfortable with this process and make sure that everything is represented accurately. So I think that it's something that we should discuss to see if you have any objections or any questions. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, what do you think? Well, I have questions and I would like to meet with you. <clears throat> on this. Maybe we can meet uh, one day next week. Absolutely. A little bit later this week, so maybe next week. Uh, whichever convenient for you. you no, know, I'm open anytime. Absolutely. I'm very flexible. So, um, you know, if you want to give me a call or I'll call you. Absolutely. And we can talk. Absolutely. Okay. One of the things that we had discussed with the town attorney was if the organizational chart and the executive summary that could potentially have certain language changed, again, just to highlight that it's a commission form of government, if we want to set that aside for now, just because, um, and I had told this to the to the vice mayor that the employees obviously are the priority when it comes to this compensation study. So if we wanted to move forward with a portion of this, which is the actual salary data with the implementation plan, and then I can provide you all with individual meetings or an update via email, whatever the case may be, with the specific language that we include. And in the following meeting, or, or whenever you all are ready to make a decision on it, and you've had the opportunity to study it time and time again, you could then approve the actual organizational structure, which is another part of this. I agree that we should, uh, I that we should move up Commissioner forward Kelly. with the employees. The with the employees, um, uh, 
what you worked on compensation, compensation. okay so I agree that we should start moving quickly on this Are you, from what I'm gathering you want to break it up and vote on a compensation package today I think mm -hmm. that's what yeah. would be okay. fair to everybody for the employees I believe so yeah. we'll do it by, by resolution but is it is it Possible to, 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 to bifurcate it like that, to separate it, and, and, and do it in, in, in parts like that. I, I know in the, in the past when there was a, uh, first of all, there was a, some questions about the, uh, that we discussed earlier about the compensation, the, the makeup compensation, if there are different different uh, salary levels. That was raised. But, but also, um, if you want to separate it, we can, but I just thought it might be more prudent to just adopted all as one plan no, at, one, at one time but <laughs> Chris to make it work where everybody is sitting up here in agreement mm -hmm. if you would sir please yeah okay that's what 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 was so and the we're, language we're, we're that we're, we're talking we're about is really minor yes yeah, so, yeah it's it's very minor and it's just to maintain consistency mm -hmm. so I I really don't even foresee it to be something that that there would be a I don't know of a major concern it's not going to change this in any way shape or form mm -hmm. we're just we're just adding certain language to it um, I don't think that it's it's a major a major change at all to what you've seen already so if you just <clears throat> give me some instructions so we're going to adopt section one uh, section three is section one the executive summary or you want no? Just okay. We're, we're going to do a section three. So section one and section two we can leave out. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. We're going to take a five minute break. Sorry. I have to leave. Just leave Okay. And then I'll give us a chance to uh, you can tell me what exactly what it is. Okay. Are we taking a break? Yes. Five minute break. Okay. Five minute recess. Meeting, recess. meeting recess at eight thirty five. Five minutes. Section three. Section three. Hey, Yolanda, you you know what? We're going to Not even in the other one either? No, in the back one, because they've taken mine and put it in the back fridge before. Yeah, the it's it was a water line that was left on on the third floor by the cleaning. Water, and she never saw the bathroom. All right. The ladies' room is leaking through the ceiling now. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it takes a while to get from the second floor to the first floor. They left the hose on on the third floor. Yeah. They're starting in the top, they'll be cleaning their way down. That is oh, not true. That's what I'm trying to figure yes. out. Who made that yeah. It finds the hole. I got my heels yeah, wet. They're here. working from the top and they're working their way down. In the rain? Did you freeze on your trip? Okay. Oh my God! Yes. My friend texts me from DC this morning. He's like, "It's 23 degrees yes. over here." I'm, so I send him a screenshot of the weather. I'm like, "Enjoy." Well, I know. All right. Are we tomorrow? I'm torn. I have a flight. I'm going to the MPO. We resume at 8:48. Five minutes. Okay. So again, just a recap of what we discussed. It's a very minor change that we'd like to implement and well present to see if we if we implement it um, and and leave that like table that which is going to be sections one, two, and then the appendix because in the appendix we would mention the the specific resolution that we're referring to in that in that line item in the executive summary and then we're presenting if you all would like to move forward with sections three and four which is the actual compensation data so that we can move forward for the employees so and you have something and then I know that we have yeah, um, you want to, to hear Michelle before we read the resolution okay she has some comments. okay Ms. Good evening, Commission and staff. Um, 
I saw the information that was submitted for the compensation study from the last meeting, and I took a look at it because I'm one of the people that was affected in the original budget cut. And I had a couple of concerns that I don't want to have to discuss in the commission meeting, but I wanted to address it outside of it. And one of them is um, the organizational chart and where I'm placed in it. Um, the position that I'm in is the billing administrator. It is a position that was created and is actually a combination of two positions. And I'm not sure whether or not both positions were considered in that as well as I also have an employee that I will be supervising. So with the, with the complexity of that position and the responsibilities that have occurred and developed over the years, usually that would be a position that would be a supervisory role. And seeing that, the amount that is assessed for that particular role is not equivalent to what most supervisors are making in the other departments over their subordinates. So that's one of the reasons that I have a concern. The other one is dealing with the situation of, um, I'm going to say lack of a better word, the implementation of the salaries. If I was in a supervis supervisory role, according to what most of the other departments are, I would be over, I'm under right now, according to what they projected. So I wanted to have that reconsidered, and I have documentation showing how the position has developed and transpired and how it has two separate aspects that were not considered with the salary range. One of the other reasons is because I'm part of the six, what was done for the other employees when they received the um, increase in pay, it was retro. And the implementation does not include any retro for um, the salaries if they are adjusted. So that was my other concerns. Those were the concerns that I had, and I would ask that my position at and you may want to consider all six of the positions to make sure that they have been properly um, calculated because a lot of our positions that were held are multiple as multiple um, multiple jobs. In other cities, it is not one person; it's multiple people. So. I wanted to ask for that to be exempt and reviewed from the final if you were so to vote on it this evening. If anybody had any questions or anything, I can answer those. Do I have any questions for Ms. Grooms? So when it comes to the billing administrator position, this is something that, that I did discuss with Michelle, that even though Michelle right now, as the billing administrator reports, you know, gives, gives the commission regular reports. Now, I'm not saying that she reports directly, but she gives the commission regular reports on her division. It's not necessarily a department head. We have directors, and then we have division heads, I would say. So the salary is in line with what is a supervisor manager level, and then we have another tier, which is your, your director level. So the organizational chart does reflect that there is an administrative assistant to the billing administrator underneath Michelle, but it's really more of a division head because billing, which collects revenue for the town, would fall under finance, and that's really the department head. So I want to explain that, that hierarchy so that everybody's clear that, yes, she does work, let's say, independently with little supervision, especially because of the amount of years that she's been working in her role. She knows this job like the back of her hand. Um, so she works very independently, but really it's a division within the finance department. So it should be more at a salary level of a supervisory managerial role 
and the cap that I had that the market shows for that position is established a little bit under what she's currently making. So what my recommendation was is don't slash salaries. She's been here for 30 years, but more, right? How many? Well, close to that, but close the to 30 years. Is, I really didn't want to <clears throat> get into it because I wanted to show you additional information um, that might be considered. So I just wanted to have the opportunity to sit down with you and review it, and then we could report back. Okay. Um. So then, um. Over the next week or so, you'll meet and review. Okay. Uh, may I raise a question? Since she since uh, Michelle incorporated the six, so over the next week or so, that I'm, I would assume that all of them could sit down with Yolanda and go over with their concerns. Is that what we're doing, or did I misread something? Are we going to go well, we're going to adopt the salary thing right now, and if there's any changes, Yolanda yeah. can make them if she finds just justification okay. for it. But yeah. you don't have six anymore. Oh, I don't know. Well, how many is it now? There were six employees that were not included in the retro that we. So that was was past tense. Oh, okay, I, it was past tense. That was past tense. Okay. We don't even the have. Positions were they addressed? Just a, just a point of there's I think there's only three of us that are still remaining here myself maybe f oh four four of the six that would have been affected and that's strictly up to you all I'm coming and I'm just addressing my concerns because I don't want us to have to keep bringing this issue up Would anybody's salary be, if, if you weren't to implement the plan this evening, would no anybody's salary change it except? No one is receiving a cut. I am not recommending any cuts, especially because you have long tenured employees here. So if they are over the established cap, my recommendation in the implementation plan is leave them. Why? Because remember that the cap is just for performance increases, merit-based merit performance increases you still have a cost of living adjustment, right, every year. So they would have gone over that cap anyway. So if they're over the cap already, especially if they have long tenure with the town, I am not recommending to make any cuts. I do not want to affect the morale of the employees in any way, shape, or form, and I do not want to penalize any employees who have been with the town long term. So my recommendation is if they're over the cap, cap them, for no more merit increases, but they're still eligible for their COLA every year. Yeah, but my question was going to be um, that in the event that the, 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 the town wasn't to, if they would put it off to the next meeting, so you incorporate th these other things. I know they're minor changes uh, for the um, charter part of it. Um, but would, would anybody be adversely impacted if they waited another month? Because there's a possibility that they may have a, a better position after they they present their um, their their evidence to you uh, regarding their position, is that, is that what you're saying, Michelle? That there's a possibility that you would have be entitled to additional salary. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, if she and the other three were able to make give, you know speak with you about that, um, would that uh, and you waited to implement the plan until you got that information, would would that adversely any, impact anybody else that's currently receiving a, a salary? No, I think I think that the mayor was on point that we could move forward if the commission is in agreement to move forward. I am more than happy to, to sit down with the team. And if there is a justification to bring it back to you to make any type of modification, then I think we should do that at that time. And that way we're, we're actually moving forward and we're not halting this process any longer. I, I just was asking the question. Okay. Is that just want Thanks. an opportunity to do Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, one more speaker. I think, we should, I think we should hold this off for one more month just to get everything in order. So when we approve it, we approve it as one instead of breaking this apart piece by piece. That's to the commission. I think, well, if okay. I think, can, let me ask you a lot. Can we live with that for 
bringing it all up next month. We, uh, Yolanda, we have a meeting on the fourth, is it? The fourth is the workshop. And the fourth is the workshop, and the eleventh is the meeting. We can do this for the eleventh. That way, it would give time for the few people that need to want to speak with you to mm -hmm. to get with you to do that. Absolutely. We can include the language, the specific language, which you all can review, I would say, by early next week. And then the employees, I'll meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, the ones that want to meet with me, will go over it. And if there are any changes, I will highlight that and send it to you. And hopefully everybody will have more than enough time before the December 11th meeting to review it. I think, I think it can be, be done. Idea. Or you can actually do it at the special because I'm going to do a special just because I don't want us to get sued for those invoices for the health fair. Okay. So would that be sooner? That would be sooner. Yeah, because those people want to be paid, so oh, oh, I see. they've already okay. rendered services. So I don't want us to, you know, get in any issues. So that's why I'd like to go ahead and have a special to deal with that. So if you want, we can do the special absolutely at the, at the same time to include this and that way we can knock it out before december absolutely okay thank you okay okay michael do you want to address this now or you want to wait till next week okay uh good evening uh michael miller michael miller planning associates uh town planner for 23 years um i went i looked at this document as well and uh there's a proposal in here to um, create an in-house position for a city planner. Um, uh, and I looked at the data set prepared by the consultant um, for the, a town planner. And interesting enough, uh, several of the listings where it says there's no planner for the community, I am the planner for that community. And the, the other one, the, a lot, some of the other categories are like when OL did her study, the city, the comparable cities are in North Florida someplace. They're not even in South Florida. So I have a little problem with the uh, the way the compensation was done, and then more particularly on the organizational chart. I just you know I'd, I've not talked to you. Uh, the manager has not talked to me about what her intention is. Uh, I've requested uh, to talk to her when she had some time. I don't, um, I would like to continue to serve the town. Um, I'm getting old, but I still have a few years left in me. <laughs> I don't know, um, you know, what, what the plan of the community is long term. Um, you know me, I know you. Uh, you know, to hire a planner based on this average, which is probably about $80,000 a year for what I would call a mid-level mid planner, not an advanced planner. That's one thing to talk about the salary, but as you discovered when you started looking at compensation, it's a package of the, the salary plus the benefits. <coughs> and if you take, uh, typically in business, you, you know, especially a consultant like me, you, you have benefits and then you have to pay for office space and so forth. So if you took an $80,000 salary for a planner and you took another half of that for benefits, which is what yours works out to be. Your own staff prepared that a couple of years ago. That's about a $120,000, $150,000 hit for an employee. My company has six employees, and we built just about that to the community. You know, my, my base salary with you is $42,000 a year, half of that. Anything else you ask me to do, I'm the light switch. You tell me to work, you t I work. You t if you don't want me, I don't come around. So if you want to cut back expenses, that's fine. You know, I'm just presenting this to you. I, I don't know if the commission <coughs> has taken a formal position on it, uh, hiring a full in full-time in-house planner. I don't know what they would be doing all day. Um, you know, uh, so I'm, that's that's my statement to you. And I'll be happy to talk to anyone between now and, and your next meeting. Thank you. Could I ask if the manager would meet with the consultant? I know she's been really busy. I don't, I don't have a problem meeting with Mr. Miller. 
just call my office and set it up and we can meet. But um, this was something that the commission had recommended and we were bringing it, we would have been bringing it forward, mm -hmm. uh, the plans of it at the retreat, but we can bring it forward in December. You just give us the direction to leave it there and then we'll proceed with our retreat in December. Any other questions? Okay, number four, authorizing professional marketing for a newsletter for the town. Uh, Mayor Muhammad, you guys had the quotes last month. Um, I just passed them out again because they weren't attached. Um, I've different uh, hmm? choices to choose from. You have three here. You have A and B. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Then uh, the one that I'm going to butcher that I'm not going to try to say his name because y'all are going to tell me that I'm watching movies. Which one? Yeah, she's speaking to the mic, y'all. Say it again. How do you say it? Gildo? Guido. What? <laughs> that doesn't look like Guido. Yeah. Okay. So you have um, JMB for for five hundred dollars. She's actually the cheapest. She gives you a flat rate of five hundred dollars a month. Um, which includes the newsletter, it includes three flyers, it includes one Facebook posting per month and one image monthly, it includes um, one, brochure, one brochure design every three months and um, with uh, five redos um, for 500 a month, you have high powered graphics, um, which is another local company. They want six fifty a month for the newsletter and any other any other items is a la carte. So if you want a half a full page ad it's one thirty. If you want a flyer it's one thirty. If you want a trifold it's one forty. And if you want a banner it's seventy five dollars. And then the other one is I still see Gildo, but you say Guido. Guido Lombardi, he is Six hundred for the bro for the newsletter. Any um, flyers is one fifty. Any uh, trifolds is two hundred dollars. Any banners is forty five. Any roll ups is sixty, and any yard signs is forty five. So um, based on this, the cheapest person would be um, J J M B at five hundred a month, all inclusive to do the newsletter and whatever flyers and Facebook and brochures. And this is a budgeted item. So. Um, I would make the recommendation for J and B to do our newsletters. Well, I want to get the newsletter out for Thanksgiving and holiday because we haven't done our newsletter in over a year. I'm just getting this back up though. Mm -mm, it was no. in there last it week. Was. That was, was there last no, at the was. workshops? It was. It's just not on there right now for some reason. Okay. Remember I had the conversation because I keep calling him Gildo and yeah. everybody keeps telling me it's not Gildo, but it looks like Gildo. <laughs> I don't get Guido from this. You gotta but have a little sense of humor. <laughs> but yes, I mean, she's the cheapest, like 500, 500 a month. And you're more than welcome to review the newsletters before their finals, and they give us five re redos. So, does anyone have any questions? Can he read the resolution? Using G the you can say the first flyer will be ready by uh, Thanksgiving? It's up to me. Um, well, I don't know. I just have, can we just give me a minute? Okay. Just go to another item. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to skip around to number five the discussion international promotions, business community involvement, agro, eco gardens and centers, and wellness programs. Okay, so we have uh, the BSO and all the deputies and firefighters. Number 11. December 11th. Right, on December 11th, uh, 2019, 10 a.m. in the morning, and Joy will do a proclamation. 
and uh, Miriam will help, and we'll have a nice event. He authorizing the town to enter into agro eco community garden agreement with Capitol. Yeah, well, so you all got the changes. The attorney showed you the, the changes that were made and name change. Attorney Ryan, yep. when I it's a uh, resolution of the Town Commission of Town of Penn Park, Florida, authorizing the town to make an order to the Agro Eco Community Gardens Agreement with Cap Caparea for All Inc., a Florida Not for Profit Corporation, authorizing directing the mayor to execute and deliver said agreement for and on behalf of the town, providing for severability, superseding conviction resolutions, and provide effective date. Whereas the Town Commission authorized the renewal of the Agro Eco Community Garden Agreement with uh, Maculay, Miami, Brazilian Arts Institute by Resolution 19-10-03, adopted on October 9, 2019, and whereas Macalea of Miami Brazilian Arts Institute has filed documents with the Florida Department Division of Corporations to change its corporate name to Capriella for All, Inc., and whereas it's necessary for the Town Commission to authorize the town to enter into the Agro Eco Community Gardens Agreement for the new, with the new corporate name of Capriella for All, Inc. Or be resolved by the Town Commission of Town Penn Park, Florida, Section 1, the town is authorized to make it into the Agro Eco Community Gardens Agreement with Capriola for All, Inc., uh, for further development, operation, management, and promotion of the e Agro Eco Community Gardens. That agreement has been on file with the town clerk and by reference made a part here of Section 2 that the mayor is authorized and directed to execute and deliver said agreement for and on behalf of the town. Section 3, the Affinity Clause se section, or any part or application of this resolution is held by any court, competent jurisdiction to be unconstitutional and invalid, and in part by application shall not affect the validity of the remaining portions of the ap for application of this resolution. Section 4, that all resolutions, parts of resolutions, conflict to it, being said, might be superseded to the set of such conflicts. Section 5, this resolution shall be enforced and take effect. Move upon special adoption. Motion to adopt. Second. Roll call. Right, Senator Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Clerk, Commissioner Jacob? And Mayor Mahoney? Yes. Number seven, memo agenda request national wildlife habitat. Okay. Uh, commissioners, what this is, is most municipalities around us belong to this group. And if, if I may, uh, Todd, you want to explain a little more? Or do you want Miriam to come up and explain it to the uh, commission, the yeah. background? Miriam is more versed on it. Okay. So, Miriam, if Madam Mayor, would you bring her up? Come on down, Miriam. Hey, this is Miriam Jack. Um, I got this information from um, uh, Broward County, and they do, they do. Um, Miriam, I'm sorry. Mike. Excuse me. If you could speak. Into okay. The they they do recommend all the cities in in Broward County to belong to this group, and for here, the town of Pembroke Park, uh, that will be a very good. Um, a certification to have for the gardens, um, especially t into getting uh, writing grants and and being recognized um, nationwide. And as the uh, commissioners, you would you would see like over in the Miramar Community Garden, they have it right there where it's wildlife and you know it's impressive. And so we use that as part of our application to get things done over in the forest, the garden, because we're looking for more help from nonprofit organizations. So this is just another thing to help. And this would be the application, correct? This isn't the uh, final. Yes. The application um, we have to submit, and it does have um, about five cri criteria that we have to check. Um, just each criteria. Under each one, we have to check either two or three items okay. in order to um, qualify. So basically what we're looking for, Todd and I and Miriam, is to make the application so we can apply. And what we did was we, we found them at the uh, FITSI. Okay, they came up and they were looking at all the uh, brochures and then he looked at the, 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 the community garden and he invited us to come over there to one of his meetings. And it's a pretty big deal. And we, and Miriam went. And so everything looks good. Todd likes it. Todd, you want to say anything more about it, what it does? And it's just making out the application so we could have a designation. There is a cost of $20. Right. It'll help with points on some of the grants and, and projects like that. So. 
it's 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 not expensive. So. Well, you're saying it's not expensive because you know we got to watch our. It's it's a our, twenty dollar application fee. Okay. Let me tell you. I know. Got to still watch your the dollars. You know, a wise man told me once, and I'm going to share this with you. Okay. He says, actually, he didn't tell me. He told my husband, and he said, young man. He says, watch your pennies. The dollars will take because care of themselves. Because your pennies <laughs> add up to dollars. Right. And dollars add to dollars. And can I tell you, that man is a multi-millionaire or billionaire, and he used to own Hershey's Chocolate in Chicago. Yep. I just wanted to share that. So, uh, Kim, what do you need, a motion? I make a motion that uh, staff is authorized to... Uh, apply for this designation and then it'll come back wouldn't it come back to the commission uh, Chris eventually no, no you just go ahead and file the application and, okay. and so I'm gonna make a motion there. that uh, the, the the staff is directed to fill out the application and apply for the designation and participation at an amount not to exceed would you say nineteen dollars how much twenty <laughs> twenty okay twenty dollars not to exceed twenty dollars I can't see I want to put some money in there for the bird bath. <laughs> Got to have some kind of water source. Yeah. So we might have to come back. No, so it's just, just to get it going so we it. know that staff is working on something positive. But we got to get some volunteers because you can't be using staff for this. We are we getting. Gotta, we have a lot of work that needs to be done on the outside that's not being done. Okay. So uh, we need to be focused on the outside of this town. And through the chair, may I? Mm -hmm. Can we get a uh, second first? So yeah, let's go discussion? get a second. 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 I go ahead and have your discussion. Okay. I'm going to let Todd respond to that and uh, what we're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, what we've been doing is soliciting uh, volunteers so that we don't have okay. to use staff time. And uh, we've got uh, Caporeros mm -hmm. donating. Uh, this community group uh, that is on here tonight is is willing to donate time the 4-H group is donating time uh, we've been gathering different groups that are donating so that we're not having to use very much it's, it's gone way down in the amount of time that we've used as staff and it will continue to decrease as the uh, volunteers increase and also the professional firefighters association right. the professional been firefighters were out helping us uh, uh, mix soil times. and everything uh, this last week uh, so and along with Caparero, there was a lot of people out there helping. Uh, it wasn't done by, uh, by staff, uh, paid staff. Well, Todd, you know where I'm coming from. There's been a lot of things that have been neglected in this town, and we need to be focused and we need to use <coughs> our staff on the important things, which is, and this, yes, don't get me wrong, Howard. On we're trying. Um, to, we're catching up on a lot of the maintenance that has been deferred, and I understand first. what you're talking about. Okay. And, and and that's what we're trying to do. That's why you see all these groups on here, uh, is to do just that. Okay. We got that message, and that's the direction. Good. As the long ship as you got turned. the message. Okay. Oh. Okay. So. I'm going to say this just because I see this on your application that you need a water source. So I would advise you to do the bird bath or something cheap. So you might want to change it to $100 just so you can get a bird bath in there so you can actually meet the requirements for your application. Yeah, okay. Because I don't, yeah. I, I'm thinking the bird bath is the cheapest thing because a lake, stream, seasonal pool, ocean, spring, <laughs> river, rain garden, or water garden, or butterfly puddling area. Might we have a butterfly sense. puddling area. That's what we put over there to take care of that. Okay, so I just but let, how about let's just do an increase in case so we don't have to come back. That, that's okay, all I'm saying because so I think they're like I, about $50 to go buy a bird bath from like So how do I, what do you want me to do to correct what I already said? So how well, you have the money in the budget for the for, for the community garden to buy the bird bath already. Just stick to one issue of, of getting well, the, uh, the habitat application. application. Yeah, but, yeah. And, and but, but, uh -huh. but, but, she, as the mayor is pointing out, there might be an additional expense to buy something to meet one but, of the criteria. Yeah, but but it doesn't, it doesn't, it's oh, not it's directly related there? to, yeah, yeah, it's not and directly it's related under, to your application, yeah. Oh, okay, and it gets the approval from everybody? Okay, I hear what, what you're saying. Okay, thanks, Chris. Thanks, okay. Madam Mayor. Okay. Good suggestion. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacob? Commissioner Cohen? 
as long as it's budgeted. Yeah. Commissioner Maria Deville? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. I go back to GMB. Is it the one you want to pick? Yeah. Okay, so a resolution of the Town Commission in Town of Pemberton Park, Florida, authorizing town to make an interdependent agreement with JMB Design and Graphics, uh, authorizing the uh, mayor to execute and deliver said agreement for and on behalf of the town, superseding conflicting resolution to provide an effective date, whereas the town desires to retain the services of a professional design firm to prepare the monthly newsletters for the town and additional public relations uh, brochures. And whereas the town, has reviewed, town commission has reviewed the proposals presented uh, for qualified uh, design firms and desires to select JMB uh, designs and graphics. Now, therefore, be resolved by the commission, town commission in the town of Grand Park, Florida, section one, the town commission is authorized to make an enter into the agreement with JMB designs and graphics. Um, Graphic design products, uh, said agreement being on file with the town clerk and by reference made a part of your of section two, that the mayor is authorized to direct to execute and deliver said agreement for and on behalf of the town, section three, that all resolutions and parts of resolutions conflict with being the same are hereby superseded the extent of such conflict, section four, this resolution shall be enforced and take effect in the upon special adoption. A motion to adopt. Second. Discussion? Okay. okay. Now who's going to be in charge of organizing what we go out and do? Uh, in charge of the newsletter? Yeah, but the manager, that's what the manager used to the be. The manager should be doing it. So then it's done correctly. Okay. Is that, that's all I had to ask who's doing it. And Is that okay? I could care less as long as it gets done. Well, everyone know. still says this and that because when all he was right. in charge of it before, everyone still had issues and but complaints. I think so. the manager, that's what she's in place for, and I think she should be the one to do it. Okay. Roll call. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. <coughs> yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Number seven. May I say something? Yeah. I'm able to work with staff, right, to get it done? Yes. Okay, thank you. I would say yes, right, Mayor? Everybody's supposed to be working together. <laughs> I have no I idea. Hope. I don't know who I'm supposed to work with. Someone I'm not supposed to work with. Yeah. Let's go. Let's keep moving. Number, okay. number eight, volunteer cooperation with 4-H hands-on for agency agreement form 2017. Okay. That Again, Madam Mayor and Commissioners, this is another issue of an organization. Uh, uh, what is that, 501c3? Okay. Or it's a nonprofit, let's just say that. Uh, comes and helps the town. Uh, Todd, Miriam, and I met with, with them, and they're eager. And I think the, a contract has gone to the attorney. Right. And, and, and it's acceptable, um, the agreement form. So, you, yeah, you can just uh, approve the motion to approve the, the participation with the hands-on priority agency agreement. Okay. Uh, so, agency. Yeah. so we'll discuss it, and then I'll make a motion to approve uh, the volunteer cooperation with the 4-H hands-on Broward Agency Agreement Form-2017. Dash Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. Commissioner Mary DeVille? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Going to cost money. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Third Commissioner Jacobs. Yes. Mayor Mahan. Yes. Number nine. Discussion. Legum HR Professional Services Clerk Commissioner Jacobs, Town Manager Muse Salters, and Town Clerk's Office. Back on here because we need you all to. Uh, we can't vote at the workshop. We need you to vote to approve um, the invoice uh, from um, from Miss Yolanda. Do we need a motion to approve, what was it, $12,000 for the cleanup of the clerk's office? Totally, yes. So I'll make a motion that we approve the $12,000 to clean up or the invoice that has been submitted that uh, the manager has. All right, I have a question. Mm -hmm. May I? Yeah. All right, what are we doing about our town clerk? I mean, I'm number next. 10. That's next. Oh, yeah. Okay. Next. I want to make sure because this is important. I'll second it. Okay. Roll call. Wait, did you want to say something, Yolanda? Okay. No. Thank you. 
<laughs> Good answer. I'm just sticking around for the next item. You're all gone. Right, so. you know, well, I, I, I would have put them all yes. together for you, but mm. yeah. Um, Commissioner Jacob? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Lamont? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Number 10, discussion, deputy clerk's options. So, oh, there you go. It was presented last week. Um, prototype was one of the ones that was presented and a resume from a young lady. And Yolanda can speak to, um, prototype was the group and um, Marlene D. Mar Martell is a suggested um, temporary clerk that we and mm -hmm. and the resume is back there for you. Right, so I wanted to provide multiple options, especially because clerks are very hard to come by. Um, we looked at prototype, which to my understanding was had like a rocky road as far as um, services that have been rendered to the town in the past. And then I was able to find an individual with clerk experience and also um, who has served as an elected official. So. I know that um, I confirmed before today's meeting actually that she still is available and she understands that it would be in a temporary uh, capacity until whatever decision is, is made regarding that position. <laughs> a motion to... You want me to make a motion? Okay, who is it that you're recommending? Marlene D. Martell. You uh, make the motion. I'll make a motion to bring on um, Marlene Martell as a temporary, as a 1099 employee, temporary employee uh, for the an employee. She, as, as a clerk, as a consultant, she's going to be a 1099 employee. Uh, as an independent contractor. Independent contractor yeah. As an independent contractor for the clerk's office. And I'll second. Discussion? No, roll call. Clerk, Commissioner Jacob? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. And, uh, Commission, could you give the authority to uh, the manager uh, with the advice of uh, our HR consultant to, to determine the uh, compensation? Yes. I would make a motion. And a motion on that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll make a motion for, um, for HR to work with the town manager for the compensation on the uh, temporary clerk position. Second. Clerk, Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Muhammad? Yes. Okay. So can I ask some questions? And you want this to be done right away, correct? Right away. Yes. Okay. Can you authorize us to contact her? You said yes. Yeah, I, I think that's sufficient. Why do we have you up here? What are we doing with Mrs. Joseph? Now, are you done with your report? I am. Okay. So your recommendation is, can you tell us for the record? It's premature for that at this point. It is? Yeah. I think it is. Right. So, don't you want to have this? I thought this, we were supposed to discord? vote on this. Uh, at some point, but you have plenty of time still. Under the, under the terms of, of, of the uh, her current and current employment status, is that it was my understanding this lady would help to uh, this Miss Martell would help evaluate the situation there. Then you can make a determination at that point as to. I thought she was making the determination. I'm sorry. Okay, I may be mistaken then. Excuse no, me. No, it's CHR. I I simply well, you all read my report, so. My only concern is that the town is continuing to spend, you know, taxpayer dollars yes. on a position on an individual that is currently on administrative leave, has been on administrative leave for quite some time, and I do not recommend to prolong that decision, whatever decision that may be. I corrected. I apologize. I'm sorry, Mr. Attorney. So I had asked before that we had a special to take care of that item. Um, Technically, it's going to be done today on this. I think. Right, Chris? Because the report was given last week at the workshop. 
or if you want to do a special, you can include it with the health <laughs> fair and the um. What was the other thing that we had on there? And the comp study. Comp plan. Comp plan. I think we should do it tonight and get it over with. This is going on too long. And again, it's taxpayers' dollars. And I think we should take a vote tonight. Um, yeah, it would have been helpful to know this was going to come up, um, but I'm not prepared to. to we have this uh, special coming up, what, next week probably? Yes. Next week. Okay, so then put it on for next week. Um, You'll be here next week. I will. Do you all want to set the date? Yes, I have a date right now so we know. I will also make myself available early next week and, and late this week in case anyone has any questions on that report that I sent. Won't be back to the 20th, so. Okay, well, that's on the 18th anyway. Um, if I could just remind the commissioners. To oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. The, the Christmas, I mean, our Thanksgiving thing is the 25th. The 25th? Yes. Okay. So um, do you guys want to do the 21st or the 22nd of next week? I think we should do the 21st. 21st. I won't get cursed out by mommy. <laughs> On the 22nd, mommy's birthday. And what time? 21st of what? Of, uh, six. Thursday. Six o'clock? Six o'clock? Is that good, Ray? No. That's fine. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, 6.30, that helps. This room will be used for the bagging of the Thanksgiving um, baskets. It's okay? Yeah, that's fine. We can leave it in the back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Mr. S Mrs. Softers just said, maybe 6.30, okay? Help, our, help uh, Commission of the Deville get out. I can make it 6. Not to hold anybody up. Thank you. I'll wait for six or The 21st. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. 6 is fine. It doesn't matter. 6 6 30. Just pick one. Okay. So Thank Thursday, you all. the 21st, we have those three items on the agenda. So that will be the health fair expenses. And the second is HR. HR and study. And then the clerk and the deputy clerk position. Mm -hmm. All three, right? On mm -hmm. the twenty-first. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um. Number eleven: policies and procedures. And it's not attached again. I read the item. Um, it's this policy and procedure. Right. I don't. Yeah, you know, we have, we have we have previously prepared it, and it's been uh, on the agenda a couple of times. These policies and procedures for the uh, con conduct of means. We, we'll we'll email everybody tomorrow, okay. and then that way you're guaranteed to have it. Um, and then is this is the same one we've been working on. It's the same one's been on the agenda several times. Yeah, the document itself. So it's the same document that you you would have had if you go to your. Previous meetings and backup is the same one. Number number twelve, Pembroke Park Cares update. Yep. We have gotten we we've requested the information from Hallandale because we're going to go through that after the Hallandale. Uh, they haven't gotten their their setup yet, so wanted to review that. That was mentioned at the last meeting that they have are operating one in a similar manner as this. So I'm going to say this. In the meantime, I don't know if we need a motion for it or not, but I found someone that's willing to allow us to use their 501c3 to get toys for our toy giveaway. Ma'am, I have a motion. Second. I'm sorry. So um, I don't know what we would need in order to partner with to utilize um, someone else's 501 That's just what I was going to ask you. Um, if when when do when do the applications need to be in? Um, 
When is it? This week? Next week? Oh, she went ahead and sent it in. Okay. Well, you can let's go ahead and, and uh, you can ratify it uh, at that special that you're having. Okay. That way, we'll have the information of the of the team, of the company, what it is, and then you can you can you can ratify it as as agreeing to partner with them in the cooperation for okay. the toys, toy drive. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, Commission, commissioner comments. Oh, do you want to? Did I miss anything? Okay. No. No. Uh, nope. nope. Howard. Well, yeah, nope. Uh, Chris, when are you going to have your determination on expenses for attorney fees? Well, we would have that by uh, the special. I'll try to get it for you by the special. Yeah. I'm, yes. As we discussed today. Yeah. Okay. Is that the attorney fees? Mm -hmm. Request for payment of some attorney fees. Yes. Okay. The second thing is, we talk about money all the time, and last night okay and i wasn't even going to come to last night's meeting unless there was three commissioners here so i was told at the very end attorney ryan said and and uh, the town manager said there was going to be three commissioners so i showed up okay attorney ryan showed up now it cost did it cost money for you to show up last night attorney ryan yes Yes. Then you had staff, and you had expenditures, and all of a sudden we're going along to take care of some business that was very important to the manager, and two commissioners had a reason why they didn't want to show up. That's fine. We had a quorum, and I would like for this one commissioner that got up after we started the meeting and walked out where we could not finish the business that was on hand. So, uh, Commissioner Cohen, could you explain so we could I all? I think I explained it yesterday, and I think that I explained it there. I already explained it. There's nothing else to explain, Howard. No, you said that the- and I you, thought, too, that the mayor was going to be here, and she wasn't here. I sent out an email to everyone stating my position. Um, that went out yesterday yesterday evening I did a reply all that I would not be in attendance because I did not believe that the meeting was properly noticed because I also went on the website on Sunday and I did not see it there and so I scheduled meetings for Tuesday because it wasn't there I was like oh no I thought we had a meeting it's not there so I guess we don't so with that being said I did not attend the meeting because I believe that it was a violation and I was not trying to risk my law license or the personal fines of attending a meeting that was not properly noticed. Because when I went on on Sunday, I didn't see it and neither did um, a couple of other folks that looked at it that when I was trying to figure out my calendar. Mm -hmm. So I did not attend. And I sent out an email notifying everyone that I would not be in attendance because of the fact that I did not see it properly noticed when I went on the website, I didn't see it there. But I also stated that there was also some issues because over the weekend I could not access my email either, but the public should not need a login to access iCompass. So I have every right to stand my belief right. and that it was not a properly noticed meeting. She has every right to stand her belief. That's right. Um, and so. Well, wait a minute, let me, that's not where we're going here. And we yeah. had we had three commissioners you here. We and I can I do, think look, I want here's what okay. I do. Let me let Let's me finish my comments. Think, Howard, I do have to think, Gina, because what you did was walk out no. where we wasted all that money having all this to get oh. to this meeting. And I don't think it's right. We're always she's always talking and she has a right to do that. I have a right to question it too. You walked out of a, a meeting that was started. I read the item off where it was up on the floor, up on the stairs, and then a commissioner, she was able to vote, she was physically here, she should have voted and not said she's not voting because of you. And the attorney said that. You should not be taking that into account. First of all, I asked table this meeting but you just kept on insisting that we go on with the meeting because the managers explained to you 
that this was and, important for us to take down. And so, Robert, Attorney yes, Ryan yes. did put out a letter, and yes, I did see your email. Okay. And, but Attorney Ryan did put out an email telling everybody that it was legal and it was posted at the meeting. So I thought that everybody was going to be here but Jacob. Okay? But I thought the mayor was going to be here. So, you know, with all these games going on and all this chaos, you know what? I didn't know what to think. And I wasn't going to stay here, Howard. Okay? But you called. And I left. You know. And don't say that I called, we're, that I for, cost for, for this town call, money. Can we, can because we you're the one that's this? costing this town money. Tina? Can, 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 can I say something really quick? quick? Yes. I'd like everyone to be aware that I did send out two emails canceling this meeting, this special, because of the legalities of it, okay? They pushed forward, the, the town manager uh, went to the town attorney and pushed through, and pushed that meeting forward. Now, I understand the importance of the meeting, but I also understand the legalities of having stuff posted properly online. And when I wasn't able to access it all weekend long, I had emailed the town uh, manager multiple times explaining that I could not access the town calendar. I sent screenshots. It would only bring up the uh, notices. You would click on it. It wouldn't bring up the <coughs> iCompass calendar. And there's two other calendars on there, which is really deceptive because the public can look at one of those and think that's our town calendar when we have another town calendar that's you know, hidden over here. So if people don't know how to access that calendar, they go to the other calendar. So my point was the legalities of that meeting, that is why I canceled the meeting, even though the manager took it upon herself to push this meeting through. Now, we could have just moved everything over to tonight's meeting like we did and pushed through and everything would have been fine and it wouldn't have cost the town the extra money and all these other headaches. But no one wanted to listen to my position on it and that's fine. The attorney put his position in and again, it is his opinion on the legalities of it, but I will tell you, it is his opinion. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. We, we pay the town attorney, and this is n nothing personal towards you. I'll take it. There's a lot of people sitting in prison because they've taken bad advice from their attorneys, you know? And so I was My looking. My clients. <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't saying for you, but I'm just saying I was taking the higher road on this to make sure that we all stay out of trouble and keep this town in check, but nobody wanted to listen. So we all pushed forward and had that meeting. It didn't work out. It tossed the town money. Maybe next time, pay a little more attention to what's going on. You know, the bigger picture of the, the entire scenario. And I felt and I felt that it was very important that our mayor should have been here. Okay? Points are well because picked this me. reflects on you and the, the three of us. Because this was 17 and not so much you, Jeffrey. No, it wasn't okay. either of us. Or right, either of you. And that's why, but the mayor should have been here, Howard, and myself. And because you were not present, I left. And we'll leave it like that. Okay. Well, as I've stated before, it's everyone's gone through ethics training. Everyone's gone through sunshine training. If something's not posted properly and you attend a meeting, there is a ramification yeah. on the commissioners personally to be liable for a fine. And I'm not willing to take that chance of having to pay a fine unnecessarily when I saw something and I saw that it wasn't there. And that's why I sent an email out stating I would not be in attendance because of the notice requirement and I felt that it was a violation. We all have our opinions. I'm not going to put myself personally be liable for anything. I'm not going to do that. I have a law degree to protect and I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize that and bring myself before any type of ethics commission or any other commission for that matter. So I sent my email out stating my position. I did not waver from my position. Everyone has their own opinion on things and I'm going to do what's right to protect my license. Well, what I'm, I'm going to do what protects me. Excuse me. May I say something? Mm -hmm. If you look in your iCompass pad, you will see when the meeting was published and it was published. I sent out a link where you could go to get the meetings. If you clicked on calendar or notices, you would not get the meeting. That was sent to you. They were advertised properly. OIG agrees that they were operated properly. They got the, they got everything. So, and that's when the attorney sent out his directive after talking 
finding out it was posted. Being posted um, on the back end of it, iCompass is different than being I published take it filth for the because public. nothing is going to be believed, but it was out there. All other staff and everybody else got them because yeah, they crazy. followed the link and it wasn't the back the back side. The only people see the back side is us when we go to iCompass. When you go on our website, the public sees that. They do not see what we see. But, you know, it's okay. It's fine. Well, it isn't fine. You know, we, Ray, rushed home from work. I was doing other things. Gina was doing, Commissioner Cohen was doing other things. We convened it. I said to the manager, I don't want to come down here unless you have three commissioners that are going to do it. Because I read your email, I understood it, I read yours, I understood it. And then the attorney, I asked him right in the beginning, is it your opinion that we could proceed with this meeting? And he said, yes. So what you have to do is rely on the attorney. What happened was out of nowhere, and she gave her reason, the Commissioner Cohen gave her reason that she felt like she wasn't going to vote on it unless you were here. Mm -hmm. And then he, the attorney explained that you should not be making your opinion on whether the mayor is going to be here or not. You have a duty as a commissioner and to I discharge. And I also did not have a complete. I'm not going to vote on something that's not complete. Then that's the manager All right, so and, the, and the attorney. Okay, okay, can we, can we go ahead and move on from this because we, everybody's yeah, made okay. their position known? I just wanted to, I just wanted to say okay. that, that if we meet, let's meet and get the business done and move on and move forward. And I can and tell I, you, former other commissioners got up here and left and we had the attorney here and that. You never said a word, oh, but yes, because it's me, you're talking. No, because you were saying about cost and money, Gene. Yeah, well, yeah. you that brought that okay. up. Okay. Um, I, have, I have right now. Okay. Oh, no, I have one other thing. Who is going to, shouldn't the manager kind of oversee the events coordinator? Who's going to who's going to manage or oversee the events coordinator, Joy? We save that for the comp plan discussion. Okay. Special. I'll do whatever you want. But I, I, I mean, it's, it's getting on 10 o'clock. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. Um, where are we with our LBRs? Because the November 15th is the deadline, and we never did vote on what our top five or six are going to be or what we're submitting. So what's the process? What's going on with our legislative budget requests? And Friday is right around the corner, and we've had the conversation that the LBRs need to be done. So, and there was no, you weren't on here for Public Works to have that conversation just now. So, so what are we submitting? Yeah, but guess what? November fifteenth is right around the corner. It's this week. It's Friday. We are we going to submit any LBRs for Chevron to? The, the one the items that were brought before the commission and were approved to go forward have been prepared the LBRs and are at the uh, which ones are those the ones those were the not uh, the grants because we voted for the grants before the ones right the grant applications that we were and the the those items the uh, basically the same things that we had finished had approved last year to go forward went back forward the uh, a drainage project, a, the uh, the parks project, the uh, looking for funds in the parks, and those kind of things. They put in those basic ones that they put in every year. They did not put anything other because yes. the, we never had the meeting to have the have other additional items added. We only put forward that we put forward all those that had been approved by the commission to go forward, and that's all that's been put forward. I don't have a copy of the capital improvements list. That's what we were we kept saying we we're going to have a special to deal with. So um, can we have it next? You if you can, it's Friday. It's Friday. The LBRs are due Friday. What, what did Chris say? No, just make sure you're talking to the mic so she oh, can pick up okay. when you're speaking to the mayor. Okay. So. Um, 
Is there a specific area of funding you're looking for? That's what I I need to know because we can work something together and and get it through. We get with the all of our lobbyists. Most cities usually submit about ten LBRs minimum. Right. You are submitting the same three grants that you're getting funding for. So that's why I'm like, we need to submit other projects so that you know we can see if our legislatures are working for us and see about getting some funding, especially because DeSantis has been, you know, funding projects. I'm not a Republican, but I'm just saying he has been funding projects. We have no choice. You're going to have a Republican right now, regardless. So um, I would like to see us submit, you know, a slew of projects, you know, how they say, what did, what's the saying sticks. with the spaghetti? Throw the spaghetti on the wall and see what see sticks. See what sticks, yes. So, so tell him to come up with more projects and submit them. Yeah, can you and Miriam put together like 10 projects from the capital improvements and submit it? We can uh, go to the capital, if you give us authorization, we go to the capital list and authorize us to apply for anything on it, we'll see what we can throw at it. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up a non-agenda item. Second. Okay, and so, well, call the roll, Mary. Roll call. You know, this is costing our attorney uh, time. Heartburn? Oh. Yeah, well, non agenda items. Did we get a second? He's on a time clock yes. here. I seconded it. <laughs> Vice Mayor Park? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Uh, yes. Okay. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Mayor Yes. So you want me to go forward and say, okay, so uh, the commission directs uh, uh, Public Service Director Todd Larson to, and Miriam to look into the capital improvements and put together a package. Yeah, we'll work with. With anything and with everything lobbyists, and yes. maybe something will stick. Yes. And you, can you put a package? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, hold I'm on. Sorry. Wait, so have you finished his motion yet? Okay. Uh, and your motion would be to, to submit that to the legislative delegate delegation to yeah. by the our, our consultants or legislative consultants. consultants. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Go ahead, Gina. Um, what about the walkway? Can we put that in for capital oh, improve, you for improvements? Resurfacing? Yeah. I can look into it. I mean, that's say um, risk factor. You're talking about over there and, and all the different things we want to do on that walkway? We're, we're going to do on the walkway, yeah, um, that you're working on right now. Right, the senior Linear, walkway. Linear, Howard, yes. Senior, Park, senior, Sir, senior walkway. <coughs> and the facilities. Where the uh, clubhouse is okay. on that side where it's a risk factor. Might as well put that, the sidewalks. The 30th, Avenue, the, the 30th Avenue drainage. 30th Avenue uh, sanitary sewer, maybe? Yes. It would all win. Yes, especially yeah. since they're it they're sticks. pushing for this. The clubhouse. Septic to sewer you the program. You, you the program you sent me information on the other day. Yes. In the clubhouse that we were supposed right, to that's do along, repairs. That's along and the, the clubhouse fits let's the put that now. in there. Yes. Okay. Okay. Roll Not a problem. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Commissioner Jacob? Yes. And Mayor Muhammad? Yes. And Mayor, one more thing. Go ahead. When you're done with your report, can you please give it to the manager so I yeah, can? Yeah, as soon as I get yeah, the so I report see. about the conditions, and I will, when I get it complete, that I will provide it. But now, motion to oh, no. submit. Go ahead. No, no, no. no, could I ask you to put one more on? There was a uh, the, the request for funding for the MPO for the for both 52nd Avenue and and um, and um, uh, Park Road that needs to be done by tomorrow. So if I could read this resolution so they can get it signed tonight and out tomorrow, it's a first thing I have to come up as a non-agenda item. Okay, I make a motion. We bring up a non-agenda item. Second. Okay. Vice Mayor Clark. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Clerk Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. And Mayor Mahoney? Yes. Okay, it's, um, as, as discussed before, it's this uh, um, Broward uh, Complete Streets uh, Initiative. 
It's a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Pern Park, Florida, authorizing the town to apply for a Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization for funding under the uh, Complete Streets Initiative, authorizing and directing the town staff to prepare and file all documents required for the funding application, authorizing and directing the town uh, public services director to execute any and all documents for for and on behalf of the town for the application, uh, superseding conflicting resolutions and provide an effective date, whereas the Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization uh, was created to collaborative, collaboratively uh, plan, prioritize, uh, and fund the delivery of diverse transportation options for residents of visitors of Broward County. And whereas the MPO understands the importance of creating a transportation system that addresses the needs of all users of the road, including people, well, the needs of people who walk, bike, drive, and take mass transit, and whereas uh, to accomplish the aforesaid objectives, the MPO created a complete streets initiative based upon the principle that a street uh, where the entire right-of-way is planned, designed, and operated for all modes of transportation and all users, regardless of age or, or ability, is the most effective way to serve the transportation needs of the community. And whereas the MPO has uh, funding available through the Complete Streets and other localized initiatives program to assist municipalities to improve their roadways to complete to meet the Complete Streets Initiative objectives, and whereas the town desires to obtain funding from the MPO under the, under the Cliffs uh, CLSIP um, for the purpose of bicycle <coughs> path and, and sidewalk improvements to enhance the safety and protection of Lake Forest and Watkins Glen Elementary School students who walk along Southwest 50 sec 52nd Avenue on their way to and from school, and to improve the condition of the sidewalks on the east side of South uh, Park Road in order to provide a safer route for pedestrians and bicyclists travel for pedestrians and bicyclists travel on said thoroughfare whereas the projects will include stormwater drainage adjustment for lost swell areas resurfacing to adjust road grades construction of missing sections of sidewalk and new bike paths of southwest 52nd avenue and south park road and whereas the town does not currently have sufficient funds in order to pay for the complete streets improvements <coughs> and desires to obtain funding through the uh, from the mpo through the uh, streets uh, initiative now, therefore, be it uh, resolved by the Town Commission Town Bar, Florida, Section 1, that the above recitals are true and correct and, correct and incorporated here and by reference. Section 2, the town is authorized to apply for funding through the Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization, Complete Streets, and other localized initiatives program for funding for a bicycle path and so sidewalk improvements on South 52nd Avenue and South Park Road, as described here in Section 3, that the town staff is authorized and directed to file all documents necessary to complete the required um, applications for funding. Uh, request from Broward County Metropolitan Planning Organization for Complete Streets and Localized Initiatives Program Funding for the State of Projects, Section 4, that the Town Public Services Director is authorized and directed to execute and deliver all required documents for and on behalf of the Town with respect to the Broward Metropolitan Planning Organization, Complete Streets and Localized Initiatives Funding Request, Section 5, that all resolutions, parts of resolutions, conflict here with being the same superseded, extends such conflict, Section 5, this resolution shall be enforced and take effect with the passion option. Motion to adopt. Second. Okay. Vice Mayor Clark? Yes. Commissioner DeVille? Yes. Commissioner Cohen? Yes. Clark Commissioner Jacobs? Yes. Mayor Mahoney? Yes. Comments? Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. No. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay. Here's back down to the. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll send you the